On a wonderful afternoon, I want to welcome you all to your program, the program that is to do with the rebuilding of the African continent and beyond. Sankofa is the program. Your host is Maponga J. Uh, down in South Africa, in Galaga, right behind here in Midrand. On this program of Sankofa, our main interest, areas of, Im of impact and areas of close observation, is that we want to have a conversation as African people. There's no nation on the face of the earth that has had their history so messed up and rewritten and rewritten and all of those write-ups and editions have been done by the colonial system. We know when the colonizers came into the African continent, they did not find politicians on the table. They found kings on the table. The negotiations and the treaties that have sold African lands and distributed it amongst the colonizers, those treaties are found in the pens of our royalties and the monarchs of the country. It's sad to note in terms of history that some of these kings that we now call kings on our African continents, they are not kings by no means, except that they were sympathizers with the colonizers. The real kings were killed and hunted like foxes, some of them even imprisoned. Some of them had to change their surnames for preservation. And then the Indunas and the chiefs and the yes boys, yes, the yes boys, who agreed to become the pimps of the colonial system were conferred with royalty, quote unquote, to become chiefs. And some of them have now come to call themselves kings. This history must be rewritten, because well, there's no way the land of Africa can thrive under the pretext of glorifying such a promiscuous history that stares us in the eyes. And the African child is not ready in many ways than one to start facing the realities of truth. I'm very honored and very excited again this afternoon to be sitting with you and I introduce to you His Royal Highness, His Majesty King Bungani III, who will take us through some various precepts, various introductions. And I just want us to look back into the ancient times and we learn together how kings were installed. What is a king? What is involved in terms of having a royal house and a monarchy that is standing. What are the responsibilities of the royal house? For the modern child who has gone to school, we seem not to find any sense and meaning in some of these ancient ways, as the democratic system, industrialization and colonization has taken seat in the heads of our many young people. We no longer find meaning totally from the ancient past with the wealth of information that we have. I thought it would be important Maybe we might have to even break this session into two sessions. But for today, we we'll take as much time as possible to delve into the past and simply begin to have an appreciation what is a king, what is not a king. What is the difference between an Induna and an Inkosi? And, and, and again, I'm using foreign names, a chief, to finally come up with someone who is Ngonyama or is a king. And what are the rituals and the traditions that happen in the installation and the removal, if there is any, of such a king. And this content of today, I want to challenge you that sit up straight, fasten up your seat belts, heads are going to roll, and some people who think are sitting in power might end up having to look for a solid ground to stand on. Because there's no way in the next generation we can proceed there with glorifying the past that is so shady. I'm so excited to welcome onto the show for this afternoon, King Bungani the Third, who will be my guest. He is not a, he is not a, he's not new here. He has been here in the past. Bayet. 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 Greet the people. Bayet. I greet you all, the people of God. Bayet. Wow. Here we are, Baba Bungani. Bayet. Uh, 2020. Having a conversation that starts off in time immemorial mm. and is disturbed during the colonial times. What we now have as houses of royalties and the challenges that they are facing. I will not hurry you today mm. as, as we are really sitting, I think, on the climax of the conversations we've had for the past few days. Because this for me begins to discuss the whole concept of UCA, the right. United Kingdoms of Africa. And how can we unite these kingdoms 
if we don't know what the kingdom Absolutely. is made out of. So maybe let's just draw back and uh, we can reduce a bit of uh, uh, temper and, and anger as we go just go back the back so that we can reflect from the back coming forward. By it. In the ancient times, as much as you can remember, how does one end up as a king? Bayete, thank you very much. Uh, today, what we are going to be doing, because um, we are going to be separating boys from men. I still repeat, we are going to be separating boys Bayete. from men. Bayete. In the ancient times, and the majority of them, why I'm saying this thing, mm. the majority of them do not subscribe mm. to what I am going to be telling you about today. Bayete. In the ancient times, if you remember, when we spoke about Zomo Nang, Zomo the first, mm -hmm. who came out of the waters of the river Nile, next to the reeds, who was wearing the leopard skin Bayet. with his wife, who came with a mandate from heaven, appointed in heaven as the king, to be the custodian of the universe. Mm. Zomo, he mainly explained that I am only the ambassador of God. Why did he say that? Because there are qualities that makes you to be a king. By it. Those qualities have to do with spirituality. Mm. And not just ordinary spirituality, but a divine spirituality that you are aligned to. And Bayet. that spirituality it connects you with the creator. It connects you with the cosmos. Mm. It connects you with the waters. It connects you with the world at Bayet. large. And then it makes you to see things that no human can see. Bayet. Members who are to be complementing what you are to do as a king should also have those qualities. Bayet. Now, a king is somebody who's divine. Bayet. And I still repeat it again. Who is divine? Who does not have blood in his hand? As somebody who's clean spiritually. Somebody who is a seer. Somebody who connects with God because he takes others from upstairs. Bayet. Not what you see today. Lot of kingdoms that you see today, I'll go back and give you qualities. But lot of, I, I need to emphasize this one. Lot of kingdoms that you see today are a man, a man made kingdoms that their foundation is constructed with blood. Right. And those are not kings, are not kingdoms. As I was talking about the divinity, a king is somebody that in his community, the people would go for a divine intervention. Mm. Is the person, if the, the people around they are having problems, they know that when they enter that palace, that space of the palace, they are going to be healed. Bayet. They know that if there's a, there's a, a problem, when they've, they've met with the king, that problem is over because the king is somebody who is placed on earth by God. He's a representative of God. He's the man who communicates with God. Right. A king is somebody, if children are to go for the initiation, they know that they, they seek a permission from him. He's the one who would communicate with God. Right. When children are to go and, and, and celebrate or the communities are to celebrate the, the, the existence of Zomongangi, the first, they know that when they carry those reeds, they know that this is the man who would then connect us with Zomo, who would connect us with God in terms of rituals. Right. This is a man that he is all, always divine. Not somebody who wears a, a leopard skin without the permission of God. Today, they see 
uh, 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 leopard skin as fashion. It is not fashion. Mm. It has a significance. Oh, yes. That's why Zomo Nangi, when he came out of the river, he was blessed to dress up with the leopard skin. Oh, yes. And those that today you see, they are wearing leopard skins. They think that uh, uh, then it signifies them to become chiefs or, or kings. The only person who wears a leopard skin, he is a king. Oh, yes. The chiefs, they don't wear the leopard skins yet. onto their shoulders. They wear a little uh, leopard skins to cover themselves here, to show that these are people who are linked with God. Because the people who wear that, when I say chiefs, then, then there's, there's, there's another one that they, they wear the leopard skins around. Oh, yet covering the, the themselves around. That leopard skin, it then signifies that person to be the crown prince appointed by God. Remember, a child who has to take over to become a king. God gives the instruction. God gives the signal to the seer, to the king, to the wife, because the wife of the king must be also a divine person. Before they're even born. Before they're even born. And these are people who connect with God. If you remember what I said earlier on, Zomo mm -hmm. came out of the river, of the waters, with his wife. That's why a, a king is chose, uh, they, chose they, they, they choose a wife for him. He does not choose a wife for himself. She must be a divine wife who connects with the cosmos, right. who connects with the waters, who connects with God. Not just an ordinary person where you will just decide to say, I am a chief. Chiefs are not people who have authority. Kings, they take their cue from heaven. They take, they take their authority from heaven. God tells them what to do on earth. Not chiefs, not politicians. The structure, it goes as follows. It is God... <coughs> It is the kings on earth, yet. together with the chiefs, and then it becomes the legislature, the lawmakers, who takes orders from the divine mm. upstairs. Yet. That's how it works. Not what you see today, where you see people calling themselves kings, but are wearing regalias that are full of blood. Yet. If you go to the foundation in terms of South Africa. If you remember how colonizers killed our forefathers, how they destroyed what we call ancient or uh, uh, authentic or, or, or traditional uh, systems of rulers, indigenous knowledge. the indigenous leaders of this country, you would see that the colonizers came up with their own systems. And the way they came from, they've already had blood in their hands. And they killed our forefathers. And they created their foundation. The majority of the kings you see today in South Africa, they are a foundation of the colonizers. That's why you see them wearing the full regalia of the colonizers. That military gear. That military gear is full of blood. And uh, if you look at their foundation, when they say they have a kingdom, they've killed a lot of people. They forced a lot of people to be under them. In terms of the tradition of heaven, you don't kill people, you don't force people to be under you. A kingdom is created from heaven. You don't force people like the other kingdoms they did here in South Africa. They forced people to be under them. Imagine you are Maponga. You are forced to be under Pungan. How are you going to be connecting with your ancestors, Msamo? You are speaking to your ancestors and you call yourself Pungan. Meanwhile, you are not Pungan, you are they Maponga. Don't know, they don't even know you. This is the system that was created by the British here in South Africa. Everybody calls himself with a certain name. I mean, I am Zulu. Imagine all these people that were forced by Shaka to be under this particular 
blooded kingdom. It's a blooded kingdom. Let me repeat again. It's a blooded kingdom because the foundation was founded with blood. Mm. What I am talking about, it's a kingdom that does not have blood. You can want to justify it today. Mm. Based on that foundation, leader of the same foundation, you put the crosses on the table. You put the statue of Mary. You want to address your people. You want to say to your people, I mean, it does not work that way. Let me, let me repeat it. It does not work. Your foundation is full of blood. You have killed people for you to sit where you are seated. Today, I am talking about the right foundation that is sacred, that is of God. And that foundation, it has these following principles. Right. Divinity. Spirituality. Spirituality. Out of spirituality, because spirituality molds you to be what you are supposed to be. It connects you with the creator. It connects you with the cosmos. It then defines your culture. Then it defines your traditions. Then it defines you as a nation. Not yet. Not what we see today here. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just getting started. It's going to get quite warmed up in this studio as we unpack the stories of ancient times to find meaning for our present day. Don't go away. We'll be back right after the break. The day will come when these measures are no longer needed. Until then, however, we must ensure that all our people receive adequate support. We look ahead to a better future. I have faith in the strength and the resilience of ordinary South Africans who have proven time and time again throughout our history that they can rise to any challenge that is presented to our country. We shall recover. We shall overcome. Hello. Being a legal practitioner in South Africa in these challenging times demands lawyers that will help clients beyond legal issues. The ever-changing demands in commerce and tourism require lawyers who have sound and clear business and commercial knowledge. And that's where MB Chavangu Incorporated comes in. Our business, mining, tourism, health, labor, and economic knowledge encapsulated with law and litigation experience gives us an advantage in the legal sphere. Our experience in assisting businesses, government, and various industries with their needs puts us amongst the many progressive and striving law firms in South Africa. Now, to contact our attorneys for assistance with any of the mentioned fields and others, please call us on 012-341-4187 or send us an email on admin at chabanku.co.za and be Chabanku Incorporated, where problems meet solutions. Well, welcome one more time with our guest of honor here, the King Bungani III, taking us through uh, some pieces in terms of understanding exactly the royalties of ancient times and how all this information is panning itself out in terms of our modern generation. Uh, By it. Uh, I just, my fascination for now, I know we're going to get into the political space. By it. I want us maybe just to dig back again in yes. terms of the culture itself. Absolutely. And the installation of, the of a king. I, I've heard that before he's born. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. The parents are told yeah, through absolutely. a spiritual uh, absolutely. conversation. And then, and then there is a medicine that God gave the family. Because you know sometimes families mm. are deceived. Mm. Deceiving. They want to change the course of power mm -hmm. and want to change the original one that is chosen by God and put another one for favor so that he becomes the king. Mm -hmm. Now, God developed a medicine. I won't mention it by name mm -hmm. because it's sacred. And that medicine is the one that is taken by the elders of the family 
meaning members of the royal family, and the one that is appointed also to be the one that speaks on behalf of the family. These are independent people from the king, also from the queen. These are independent observers. Observers. This is our, this is our accounting firm. Absolutely. That for yes. control. Yes. Yeah. They come in with a medicine, mm. and then they put it in the calabash mm. at night. So this is now. I want us to work yes. on it like it's an event. Yes. So yes. that uh, in the in the ears of someone listening. Let's say a child it, is born now. Right. The child is born. And then the child has grown up mm -hmm. to be ready to take over. Right. Absolutely. Now, we're on the eve, the week or a week, uh, day prior to now to the inauguration or something like that. Uh, yeah. I want us to craft it. It could, be, it could be a week. could be a week. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then what happens in that uh, circumstances that or situation is that this child... He does not say a word. It's these accountant companies mm. or these chartered accountants. Yeah, the independent. Yeah, who are there, who are in charge. Yeah. They will then speak to this medicine that is in the calabash uh -huh. at 7 in the evening in a, a house that is meant to deal with the matters of Ubukosi, of mm. royalty. Mm. They would burn the impepa, the essence. Mm and say, we are told today that this child is our child. We are told today that this child is the one who is the heir to the throne. Mm. The gods of this land, please give us a sign to say, he is the one. And then they will then ask everybody to go out and they will lock that particular room. At 3 a.m. in the morning, mm. they will wake up everybody. Let's go and see if there is a signal or not. We will all enter that room. The signal, if he is correct, we will see with the foam. On the, from the pot. From the pot. So there is what there is a concoction in the there is a pot. Concoction, absolutely. Right. Is there so a they secret speak, of it? They speak to the con concoction. Uh, absolutely. And then they go to sleep. They go to sleep. Early hours of the morning at three. We come back here. We come back here. They go and open the door. If it is the correct person, we will see with the foam coming out of the calabash, out of the door. Wow. And then they tell you to say, don't be excited, because it's that's... Just th a, it's just an introduction. It's, it's just an introduction. Mm. We are going to move to the second phase. Second level. The second phase, where they are seated, 3 a.m. in the morning, you are given that medicine to drink. The same one that they The before. same. And before they give you that medicine, they ask you independently voluntarily are you sure are you sure oh. that you are the heir <laughs> to the throne <laughs> you know, there is a story in this calabash you don't hurry there you don't you have, a, you have a right of refusal yes, you have a right of refusal are you sure are you sure that you are the one i like i like the development <laughs> because it's one thing for people to wish you yes. to be a king yes it's another thing for the spirit yes. to elect you to be a king yes it's another thing now when you are being asked yes. Do you also want to yeah. partake of this thing? Absolutely. You are now you are now seated there. Take responsibility. Yeah, you are taking responsibility, talking to these elderly people. This is 3 a.m. in the morning. Are you sure that you want to drink this medicine? Are you sure you are the one who must lead us? When you, you say agree yes, or you must refuse. You must agree mm. or you must uh, you must refuse. Mm. When you agree, they said no problem. The elderly person will then take up the calabash and kneel in front of you and say to you, I'm asking you for the last time. Uh -uh. Are you sure that you really want to drink this medicine? They said, no problem. He gives you to drink. You must finish that medicine. That whole calabash. That whole calabash. Whilst you are seated, they tell, after drinking, you, you, you sit where you are seated, and then you are told by the elderly people again, we are going to wait for the next 45 minutes, 50 minutes, mm. 
to see if you are the right person. If you are not the right person, you are going to die, as we told you earlier on. Because this medicine is going to kill you if you are falsely uh, assuming uh, power. Absolutely. Because the gods are going to kill you. They don't want anybody who's dead here to lie. Then you are given that medicine to drink. Then they leave you for the next 45 minutes. They just chat amongst themselves. They don't even chat to you. And then the elderly person who's responsible will then stand up and say, I think it's time now. You go to the crawl. If you are, you have passed the, you have passed so the that's test. level two now. Level two. Now mm. you go to the level three now. Level three. Yes. Yeah, New Galen. Yeah, as we are on level three now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stage three. Yes. Then we are taken to the crawl now. To the crawl. Uh, accompanied by these elderly people. Same elders. Women do not enter the crawl. Yes. You go there. There is a cold bucket of water there. Mm. You must drink that water to vomit that medicine from your system. Mm -hmm. Then we move to stage four. So they, they must take it out. You take it out. Then stage four, it is when you are now ready for them to talk to the goat, to the ancestors using the goat. Yeah. <clears throat> he has passed the test. They are reporting now. We are now reporting. Sending the signal. Sending the signal. We are now presenting him to you, the courts, as you have agreed to say he is the one. Then after talking round about six, seven, they then let you loose. In the evening, they call you again. And the goat, they kill it or? No, they don't. They just they wait. In the evening, again, they do the same. They take the goat and say, we are now the gods of this land. We are now going to kill this goat. Mm -hmm. Why are they killing the goat? Because they want the gull out of it. Mm -hmm. They will do that. And then the next day, you are being awoken again at about 5, 6 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Then they pour the gull in your hands, mm -hmm. in your heads in your legs and then they put what we call this panda mm -hmm. and then they give you the stick mm. to say you are the one now who is in charge of this nation mm. Mm. Wow. and then from there you go to level five but it sorry level five you are now going to be totally isolated from your friends mm -hmm from your whatever that you've been up and down with yes wife wife mm. and then you are you are going to be taught about traditions mm -hmm. and cultures mm. and customs of your people of your people you are taught conduct how you should conduct yourself mm. and then after that if you are married at that time mm. they left to go and seek a wife for you from there. Who is chosen by the gods? Whatever you're doing by yourself, it's yours. That was yours. Now we want one Now we want somebody who's going to give birth to the king. The king. The future king. And then after that, they they release you. Then you, after releasing you, you will, you will then... How long is the process with the elders? It, uh, it takes about four to five months. Wow. So it's a proper initiation. Absolutely, it's, it's a, a proper school. initiation. Absolutely, it's a so school. you're in isolation, you're yeah, in a absolutely. forest, or absolutely. you're in a homestead? They, they, or? Uh, you know, in a homestead, mm. yes. They, then you are taught how to behave, cultures, and then they teach you how to work with other kingdoms, they, all those things. History of your nation. Absolutely. Who are you, how to, and then they, they tell you, then like for an example, what I was taught, they said there's no, not everybody who is a Hadebe, mm is from the royal family. Okay. I will remember that one. I will always remember that one. Not any person who bears the same name, Hadebe, mm. he is from your family. No. Mm. You must ask that person where, if you are a Hadebe, who is your father? Where were you born? How were you born? Where is your homestead? Mm. Then you will know, no, this one I'm related to. Yes. Because in the ancient times,
people who wanted to assume power, stealing other people's people surnames. Yes. So after that, when you are, you are taught, then there is a ceremony. Mm -hmm. And that ceremony... Out of the five months now, or six the, months. Yeah, that was a ceremony. You're coming back to your homestead. The, where you are going to be delivered to the people. To the nation. To the nation. To say, this is the man who is going to be leading you. But the stick that is given, mm. the origin of it, it's not just an ordinary stick. Remember, I said, Jomo comes out of the river, mm -hmm. the waters. My stick, I had to go and get it in the river. Yes, they gave me the one that was used yes. by my forefathers. Mm -hmm. But I had to go and get a new one. That is going to be the symbol of the royals of my family in my house. Who's going to be the one that is in charge of this family. Mm. That's why I don't carry with, uh, it with me. Mm. You understand? Wow. So, so then, then when you are delivered, then people know you. Mm. There are those who are going to contest you. Because they are not happy. With your, with your election? Absolutely. Mm. Because these are thugs who would want to, to oppose. Then, in other cases, you may find out that there was a chief mm -hmm. in your family. Mm -hmm. A person that was not supposed to be uh, the one that is in charge. Mm. And then he goes conniving with people to kill the one who's in charge. Then he assumes power. What the courts will do, they will make sure that they find somebody who does not have blood yes. in their hands to be the one that is now assumes power. Mm -hmm. By it. I'll make a practical example. Zomo the third, after Abambo, Basemampembeni, Basemashuchin, when they came back from a war of Mfekan, Mahuang mm. was the custodian <clears throat> of the throne. Of the throne. As a caretaker, were, yes. While they were at war. Yes. He then came back and said, one, I am now bringing back what belongs to you. Mm -hmm. One said, I am busy healing people. Mm -hmm. I would ask my younger brother to be the custodian for now mm -hmm. as a caretaker. Okay. A regent. Sometimes a caretaker is chosen because of age or Absolute. war or sickness or something like that. Sometimes it is chosen from the house that we would, re uh, you know, there's what we call Ikate. Ikate, it is a house where, like, uh, you know, as a king, I would have the first wife and the second wife mm -hmm. and the third wife. Mm -hmm. You'd find out the house that is called Inru Ikate. Mm -hmm. It's when this wife never gave birth to to children that are to assume leadership. Mm -hmm. Then they will then say from Ekaten, can you then become the regent? For now. For now. Until we find, the, until the courts give us the right woman who's going to bear a child for us to take over. Mm. What has happened to that? If you remember and the Akate, history. Then they, yeah. they refused to let go. They let go. Mm. Remember what happened? Uh, uh, okay, maybe let me finish this one first. Then Mahuanga, when he brought this thing, when this young Kate was in charge, he went to Swaziland, mm -hmm. to Somsol, and asked for people to assist him to come and kill Mahuanga, because Mahuanga knows the truth. Now, when you kill... Your hands. Full of blood. Yes. Then the gods will then do what? Shift it mm. and give it to somebody. If people could understand that, mm. I want to come to to an example of of Ngobo and Hatev. Mm. When Ngobo used to have children, and every time you would kill them, whenever they are born, from the main house to take over, then the the council took a decision to say we need to take him. To go and hunt so that this man when he hunts will give him liquor to get drunk so that the animals must eat him mm -hmm. then they ask his younger brother from the emma mm -hmm. 
to enter his wife. The wife then gave, uh, uh, engaged with her, the wife then gave birth to the heir to the throne. Who is that? Is Lomo mm. the second. Then Hatteb then moved into the Eastern Cape because he knew that he was not a king, Hatteb. Mm -hmm. He gave space to who? To the rightful heir. Absolutely. Mm. Now, now, if we understand that, to say, uh, uh, Loma Shubi, mm. who was the wife to Ngo, he's the one who gave birth to Loma the second. Mm. And Loma Shubi was entered by the young Hade. brother from uh, Ekate. Then there was a child called Loma the second. Mm. Now, Loma the third, what he did, he deified the kingdom by killing Mawang. That is the curse that you cannot remove. Why? Because we are people who are what? Clean hands. Absolutely. That's why the court have then shifted and said, Embo needs to be restored. Mm -hmm. mm. By it. So if you understand, the king is chosen by the gods. Mm. You don't sit somewhere there in the royal council, you decide to say who is going to be the heir to the throne. Then you must know the foundation of that kingdom is not the right one. Mm. A king is chosen from the gods, and before that child is born, the gods will communicate with the parents. The gods will communicate with the seers, and the mm. seers will come to the family. Why does God communicate with the family and the seers? Because he knows that sometimes Women, they become selfish. They, they become want to pull cheeky. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. They want to pull somebody. In. Then he will then go court to the to the seers around. The seers will then come to the family to say, "You are going to bear a child, and this child, this is how he is going to be raised, and this is the child that is going to be the one that takes the custodianship of this kingship." Mm. Mm. And that's why most of the children, because of selfishness, they are now then. Immediately when they are born, they are then taken to their grandmothers to be hidden. Mm -hmm. And whilst they are there, they are then raised with a certain culture, a certain uh, uh, traditions. When they, 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 they are grown up, they then are brought into the nation to say, this is the man. Then that particular process of level one, two, three, it then happens. In, because a lot of people might say, no, we are not sure is the one. Okay. Then that is the problem. And the young man the, the, the trains a bit of war and absolutely get, just to understand what is absolutely absolutely okay uh, some of them would would be engaged into the struggle like you know i'll tell you about myself when uh before i was born my mother was told my father to say you're going to have a child and this child is going to grow up is going to suffer why do not take it as suffering it is a way of learning Mm -hmm. It is a way of understanding how things are to be done on earth. He's going to be in jail, Robben Island. Mm -hmm. He's going to be in exile. <laughs> <laughs> then the prophecy was uh, given. Absolutely. My, my mother knew that. Immediately when I went to jail, I remember when I was, I was, I was, I was to be sentenced, you know, she said, can I talk to you? I said, yes, ma. She says, hey, this thing, it has started. It has started. And I can't block it. Who I am to start to, to block it? When I came out of jail, my mother used to ask me, why are you always seated with people who are old enough to be my father? Mm. But she say, and then she says later, oh, by the way, I forgot him. You are the one that must lead us. Mm. My mother, at a tender age, with my father, they would sit down and ask for my permission for a decision of a matter that they have to take. Wow. And then when I, I went to exile, a similar thing happened. People treated me bad in exile, but later I understood. I assumed the leadership of leading my people. Mm. That was a training to teach me how people, how people are on to earth. To understand the system. Absolutely. Wow. As today we have Ukwa. Ukwa. We Uka. have yeah, Uka. Yeah. We have Ukwa. Mm. Today, if I did not uh, undergo those terrible treatments, you would where not would I get this experience? You would not be. You would not be.
It's all introduction. Absolutely. And the journey is, is cleared. And uh, another thing that is a quality <laughs> of a king, mm -hmm. that king must be a seer. Seer. You must be able to see what's coming. Absolutely. You must be able to be what they, they refer as prophets today. Mm -hmm. Because that person must be the one that communicates with God. You must not be told by criminal to say, no, you must go and kill people, or we need a sacrifice of human beings. No, it no, does no, not no. work. No, 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 no. God must tell you how things must be done. This human sacrifice is something that was done by cannibals who are not good people, who are, who are devilish. God never wanted sacrifice for people. I want us to build on that, on the, yes. on, that um, yes. on the spirituality of yes. our kings. Yes. Because many of our modern kings have become mm. entertainers. Yes. They, they, their festivities are altogether secular. Yes. We no longer find kings. I have great respect for yes. the king of Swaziland. Yes. Because yes. his timetable is quite clear. Yes. There are months in a year where the king is not available. Absolutely. He, he withdraws himself from the community. Yes. He goes to the caves yes. there. Yes. Sits alone for some time to recollect. Absolutely. The whole spiritual Absolutely. space of, uh, of yes. recollection. Yes. But, but maybe uh, for, for me as a, as, 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 as a student, that is learning. Yes. It would be important just to have a small little glimpse yes. into those uh, conversations, of yes. private conversations, yes. of into the, spirituality. Absolutely. What happens in those corners? You see, without necessarily giving us too much away, but uh, uh, you have a conversation with God. When I mean conversation with God, you don't speak to what we refer as messengers of mm. God, because you are the ambassador mm. of God. So God gives you instructions. God tells you what to do, and He will tell you to say, "As I am talking to you now, I will be going to relay the similar message." to the seer who and who and who, mm. so that you are not seen as somebody who is a dictator, who, who came up with things. It's a network. It's a network. I'll make a practical example. The first time I saw a, a bishop whom we were to go to a church called Favors Cathedral, mm. uh, Bishop Comfort, mm. in the evening I could not sleep. As I could not sleep, I remember it was about 1 a.m. And then the voice came and said, when you go there, do not allow him to touch your head. Mm -hmm. Do not allow him to pour oil onto you now. There will be the right time to do so. I am going to go to him also to communicate with wow. him to say, who are you? Indeed, after that, I felt asleep. I slept. We wake up in the morning. We drove. When I walked into that church, you know, I so wish you could find that video clip. Mm -hmm. When I walked into that church, Bishop Comfort came down the stairs and says, Wow! I could not sleep last night. Wow. I had a communication from above telling me that the person who is coming is Bungani the third. As he is Bungani the third, he is representing the second and the first. Mm. He said, the very same voice said, this is the person who came to restore things on earth. Mm. Traditional. You need to do a certain ritual to him so that he assumes the throne in the right manner. Mm. That's how Bishop <clears throat> Comfort was then assigned to be the one to do the proper coronation. Mm. I did not choose him. It was the gods who chose him. Wow. Wow. Uh, something very interesting <laughs> is that the, the whole space yeah. is, a, is a spiritual space. Absolutely. So it's not about um, no knowledge, it's not mm. about um, you know, your education yes. is not about politics. Yes. Yes. It's actually a divine movement yes. for the for the. When we come back on top of the break, of break, I want us to move into another deeper end yes. as to when a king is being inaugurated, when a king is being appointed, and when a king is being put into power, he is being put into what power? What must he be managing? What are the emblems of royalty? We'll be back right after the break. Violence and sexual abuse against children has become a major social challenge during the COVID-19 lockdown. We appeal to adults, parents and caregivers to be kind towards children during this lockdown and beyond. 
give children the space they need to engage with their reading and learning activities. Do not hit them. Do not yell at them. They are equally frustrated. We urge you to listen, support and help the children to survive the COVID-19 lockdown. Report immediately any incident of sexual abuse. The Department of Basic Education. Every child is a national asset. The day will come when these measures are no longer needed. Until then, however, we must ensure that all our people receive adequate support. We look ahead to a better future. I have faith in the strength and the resilience of ordinary South Africans who have proven time and time again throughout our history that they can rise to any challenge that is presented to our country. We shall recover. We shall overcome. Violence and sexual abuse against children has become a major social challenge during the COVID-19 lockdown. We appeal to adults, parents and caregivers to be kind towards children during this lockdown and beyond. Give children the space they need to engage with their reading and learning activities. Do not hit them. Do not yell at them. They are equally frustrated. We urge you to listen, support and help the children to survive the COVID-19 lockdown. Report immediately any incident of sexual abuse. The Department of Basic Education. Every child is a national asset. Welcome back, welcome back. It's a shame, it's a shame, it's a shame that we can be busy politicking around political leaders who assume positions of power, yet they don't have a relationship with the people. They don't have a relationship with the water. They don't have a relationship with the land. And to have political leaders who assume that they can be powerful in terms of running a country when they actually are out of touch with the ethnic and cultural platforms that legitimize their function and that legitimize their connection to the spirituality that our Honorable King is talking about. And I think we have lost quite a little bit. Because that's why maybe politicians are, are so much in a hurry in terms of being found quick triggers to shoot, to kill, to destroy, to press people down because you want to occupy power. And if you don't know that leadership has to do with righteousness and purity and cleanliness, maybe this is why more, many of our African countries are in trouble because they're being led by politically blood-stained leaders 
instead of looking for uprightness, righteousness, and truthfulness. So I want just maybe take it, take it back to the king and say, when you are inaugurating a king, when you are being welcomed into the royal houses, what sort of elements uh, are put around you? Give, give, give my honorable king some water, please. <laughs> what sort of systems are you putting around in terms of welcoming the king to, to, his, to, his, to his platform? And I'm, I'm fully aware from the Zimbabwean uh, corner, for example, in yes. terms of our indigenous um, indigenous governance systems, yes. how w they would actually start off by, um, you know, the, the mat where the king must sit, the clay pot that must be used there, as you are saying, Ukamba, where the medication is put, the horn, what does it represent, the sticks. And I can see today we are all today looking like uh, uh, soldiers at war. I, this, this is my spear, it's not a cosmetic one. If you yes. come in my house during yes. awkward hours, yes. I, might actually, I might actually use it on you. And all these elements, so that when you, by the time someone is pronounced that he is a king, uh, what are, the, what are the issues, the responsibilities that are sitting on their shoulders? Uh, remember, remember, first, these are the people who connect with the waters, who connect with God. And then when you are chosen from the gods, you are coming with the cloud of heaven. You are coming with the cloud of healing. Hmm. You are coming with the cloud of, of rectifying the wrongs it. on earth. You are now uh, uh, surrounded by the Spirit of God. And in that Spirit of God, there are things, for an example, that that's why they say there is, there is a, 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 you know, in the royal palace, there is a room where no one just enters into that room. Mm. Because that is the room, even the queen, does not enter into that particular room. Even your brothers that are born with you from the same mother, they are, do not have a permission to enter into that particular room because that room, it's a sacred room. Mm. A lot of people think when we, we talk about a sacred room because there is blood, we are talking about a place where there is no blood, where God connects with you. And in that room, this is where you sleep as the king. You don't sleep with your wife. That's why when you are to engage with your wife, you talk to God and say, today, God, I feel this way. Is it possible for me to be able to engage? Or God will then say, today, you are to go and engage with your wife because we want the heir to the throne, or one, two, three. You, and then what you do, when you are going to go there, you ask permission to do so. Wow. After you are given permission, you come from, you don't enter that room, that, that house where you, you, you sleep. You go and cleanse. Wow. And you stay three days without entering that particular wow. place. Because it's a sacred place. There in that room, you would find what we call, uh, you know, uh, amatanse. Mm -hmm. Mat. Mats, yes. Uh, reeds. Reeds. Mm you would find uh, the calabash, you would find these sacred medicines mm. that I spoke about earlier mm. on. They are there in that particular space. You find there is, there, is, there is sticks, there is spears that are sacred, that needs not to be uh, 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 dirtified by, by the wrong things. Mm. That's why they say a king does not shake hands. Because if you shake my hands, I don't know where you are coming from. Mm. I don't know if you have killed, I don't know if you have you have uh, identified your hands with whatever, or you had a terrible me uh, medicine that uh, put this crito, guban, or you have else. killed, or whatever wow, you have done, or you have touched a woman somewhere, I don't know, that's oh, why. Oh, slept with a woman yes, last night. Last night. Uh, yes, oh. You are transferring energy. Uh, absolutely. And then number two, you, you have slept with somebody wife hmm. you come and want to touch me that's why when you see me i become the symbol of 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 heaven hmm. when you see me i'm the representative of god you cannot just touch me with all these wrong things remember again when people come to the palace they come to see me to ask for a divine intervention hmm. whenever they come there that's why they tell you when you enter at the gate they tell you 
did you do one, two, three, four, five, six? When you say yes, they said then you are not able to enter. Come that, back, come back. Uh, yes. A few days and later. Yes. If you are a woman, maybe you are menstruating, they tell you, no, it's not a good time for you to enter. Please come back when you are not. Because you are entering a sacred place, wow. a holy place. And then I'll tell you a practical example. In Pumalanga, where we live, mm. my aunt was telling me a story. She said the first brother died. And the second one died. Then there was a prophecy uh, to her parents to say, take this child to that particular grave. She will never die. It means she was very sick. The first one died because of sickness. The other one died before, uh, because of sickness. The third one, it was her. She, she says, I was taken by my parents. We spoke to the grave. I started sneezing. Since that time, she says, I'm 80-something years. I've never known the hospital in my life. Wow. Meaning that place is sacred. I think you've been to the palace. Yes, yes, yes. It's very sacred. You would see we've got about four to five seasons in one day. Yeah. That is the sacredness that we are talking about. In that space again, you would, you would, you would, you are, you are then told to say, today you cannot see the king mm -hmm. because the king is in seclusion. Mm -hmm. He can be in seclusion in the palace. Mm -hmm. He can be in seclusion sent to the mountains. Mm -hmm. He can be in seclusion because I'll tell you a practical thing. Early hours of the morning, I have a conversation with God. Mm -hmm. He tells me, like, oh, like as I'm, I'm here today, I had a conversation, I did not sleep. I could not sleep because I had I was told this is a war what you are going to be doing today you are going to be separating boys from men you are going to be clarifying what is right and what is what is wrong today so so it is it is that now imagine uh, when you you go and sleep around mm -hmm. how is God going to be engaging with you mm. how you are going to be holding people uh, shaking their hands I see a lot of kings they shake hands Mm. then you wonder who is this person because this person needs not to be shaking hands because why this is a person who represent God on earth mm. now now in that space there are a lot of <coughs> things that we cannot even talk about publicly in that house it's not sacrifices no but it's something that has to do with God that's why people when they go to the palace when they come back they say I am healed mm. they were in this presence of healing and Absolutely. purity and cleanliness. Absolutely. So. Because you represent that presence mm. of, of, of healingness. Wow. You represent the, 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 the spirituality. Well, well we, are, we are just scratching the surface here. We're just scratching the surface. I, I still want to dig a little bit deeper yes, yes. because I really want the king to come out and because this, this dichotomy between politicians and kings yes causes my stomach to turn. Yes. How does a king get attached to his land? So I want, I want us on the inauguration to actually begin okay. to introduce okay. the king okay. to the elements that okay. we do this yes. because we're introducing you okay. to this. We do so, so okay. but we come back just on okay. top of the break. Okay. We'll allow the king to breathe a little bit and again sip some warm water here that we've organized for him. <laughs> and, and we will be back just after the break. The day will come when these measures are no longer needed. Until then, however, we must ensure that all our people receive adequate support. We look ahead to a better future. I have faith in the strength and the resilience of ordinary South Africans who have proven time and time again throughout our history that they can rise to any challenge that is presented to our country. We shall recover. We shall overcome. Oh. 
toss at. Challenge your ordinary. Experience the extraordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Now, I believe that my peace is my most valuable asset. Absolutely beautiful! This is exactly what I was looking for. Camping, 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 DJ Khaled! It is a day to celebrate. We're ready for action. I like it when it's nice and soft. Yeah, that is nice. How was it like growing up in Nigeria? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what it is. Feeling is there that, you know, you're doing something special. Stop being so dramatic, Mira. You should just be what you want to be. Experience the extraordinary with Starset. Feel the heat. All right. To make it through this journey alive, you're gonna need someone to teach you the ninja way. Don't just stand there, kill someone! Feel the excitement. Feel the heat with Starset. Feel the heat. Feel the excitement. Feel the heat with Starset. The coronavirus outbreak. Experience the extraordinary. Tremendous waste and tremendous fraud. Mexico is, in fact, you will soon find out. It is a day to celebrate. We don't approve at all what's going on. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily unusual. Challenge your ordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Experience the extraordinary with Starset. China saying that the latest outbreak is under control. Feel the heat. The cabinet has decided to ease restrictions on certain other economic activities. I don't want to be a white person who sits by and does nothing, so that's why I'm here today. Feel the excitement. We are here to unite because what we are fighting for is to stop institutional racism. Feel the heat with Starset. Feel the heat. You said you love me. I do. Yeah. We browse by the door. Oh no, you don't! Get out of my way! Get out! <laughs> that is an abomination. Oh, the love you promised me. Do you have a boyfriend? Yeah? Feel the excitement. You don't know how I've been longing for this. Feel the heat with Starset. God is so amazing. Feel the heat. The Bible says that through his death on the cross, we are now reconciled with our Father. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. So wherever God takes us, we're just excited about it. As a child of God, where you are, you must have an hour of prayer. Feel the excitement. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I believe that God is working right now. Feel the heat with what makes an African an African is the Africanness. And when an African has lost his Africanness, he remains like nothing but just a coconut that is brown on the outside but white on the inside. The information I'm going to be sharing going forward now, and I want the king to raise the bar and stand in a position of authority and give us a clear induction in terms of inaugurating a king. What are you inaugurating when you are inaugurating right. someone to become a chief? Or to become, but let's talk about kingship first. Kingship. Yeah. Remember, as Upungani, mm. Upungani is the king of kings. Mm. Now, the, the, the process or the procedure that before I inaugurate a king, what do I do? I first engage with God. Mm. 
yes, I was given a signal, but I must first make sure that the signal is 100% correct. Mm -hmm. I speak to the gods. And then the gods then instruct me to do the following. Mm -hmm. One, <clears throat> to first cleanse this particular person because we don't know his ways. Where he's coming from. Where he's coming from. There's a certain medicine that we use for cleansing. Mm -hmm. He goes into the river at night. He, he takes the bath. But before he does that, I must have spoken to the witches. Mm. I don't know if you heard what I said. Uh, loud and clear. I have spoken to the witches. I have spoken to the gods of the waters. I have spoken to the gods of the winds. Mm. I have spoken to the gods of the trees. The gods of the, 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 land. the, the, the land of the sand. Mm. Then we come together. Then but, we but, but the witches part is interesting. <laughs> are, are you <laughs> telling them that I'm coming to your place, but I'm coming to do something that is clean? I'm coming to do something that is clean, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be installing somebody mm -hmm. who is under the authority of God, under my custody okay. as a person. So you are the one. Do in, not don't temper. Don't temper with this particular person. Okay. I I I would have delivered that person mm -hmm. into the witches because let me tell you, if I don't do that, mm -hmm. they will be trying that particular person. Mm -hmm. They will be checking if how strong is this person. They will be using whatever. Uh, uh, witchcraft medicine at the policy of that particular person. Mm. Then we work together. Then they know that here they do not uh, uh, more. Yeah. Then we agree. Mm. Then we move forward. I, I would have loved to translate that into English. <laughs> tie tying the spirits. <laughs> you know, me more. You know? Yes. <laughs> yes, we do that. And then we engage with the, the other spirits because also there are people who have died who were not permitted to enter the space mm -hmm. of the courts. Mm -hmm. They are lingering around. I engage with those people to say, you don't step here. Mm. Today we are going to do one, two, three, and uh, we are going to work together. You do not mess around here. Mm. They would agree, and they will move away. And then I, I say to them, do not only move away, mm. but be the one that also assist in protecting this domain mm -hmm. for those <coughs> other uh, 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 naughty witches who would want to agree with me, but behind my back would want to do something. That's why they are witches. Absolutely. Yeah. Make sure that, double that, tongue. Yeah, make sure that you protect this particular. Then we move to another layer. We then take the soil mm -hmm. of that particular area in the four corners of the world of where this person is going to be in charge. Mm. We put it together, some of it, we put it together in the stick for him to be holding authority mm. of the land mm. and the ground. Wow. Then we put it together for him to be able to be the king mm. who has authority. Over the land. Over the land. So that talks to the resources. Because the resources, we would have spoken to them. Mm. The waters, we would have spoken to them. The wind, they know that there is a person who is newly appointed. And we, as the gods of the wind, mm. we have agreed to say we allow this person to exist. Mm. The gods of the waters, of, of, of the land, we have agreed for this person. That's why that person, when he, he assumes power, there is prosperity. So basically yeah. a king, the, the way I'm hearing you yes, saying it, a yes, king yes. is a custodian. Absolutely. It's, it's one thing that he comes in as an ambassador yes. from the other side. Yes. But by the time he's fully with us, yes. he becomes actually the custodian. He's the custodian because everything, he becomes the mouth, the ears, the eyes mm. of the gods on earth. And he's the one that gives a report fortnightly. Mm. Now I'm giving you the secrets of heaven now. Oh. Fortnightly, he gives the report to say how far is one, two, three. You must that, go and report. Absolutely, we do that. Okay. When you guys are sleeping, we, we go and engage with the courts. Sometimes during the day, you might think that I'm with you, but you would see me, I think you've seen me in several times. Yeah, yeah. I just totally disengage. It's when there's an emergency meeting, I'm called with the courts to go and engage. Okay. Yes. Wow. Then you, you give a report. And then, not like politicians. Mm. Politicians don't, do not have authority. That's why they come and go. You know, I was making an, an example of saying, somebody comes in today 
or somebody is passing by at your home, you are in the yard. Mm. You are asking that person who's passing by, excuse me. This person then stops and says, yes. Then you say, is this my house? Oh, come on. Who does that? Now, this is uh, equated to politicians. Mm. Because politicians are passerby. They can be recalled. After five years, they might not go back mm. to power. So how then do you engage with somebody who's a passerby who does not have authority? How do you ask a politician mm. whose land is it? Absolutely. I hear you. I hear you, Honorable. Absolutely. I hear you. I hear it. What I'm hearing brilliantly is that the man who is a king is in fully in contact yes. with divinity. Absolutely. For spirituality. Yes. He comes to the human side, he's fully connected yes. with humanity. Yes. It's like a bridge. Absolutely. He becomes a mediator of the nation yes. to the gods and then becomes the mouthpiece of the gods to the nation. Yes. And, and I think right there on that space right there that's where politicians are tempering with you because they neither have heard from god neither have they heard from people yes the question is whose voice are they listening to <laughs> i don't know i but don't do, know do, do you I, have my yes, conundrum? I don't know because when you look at the foundation of political organizations are founded in the same foundation of blood because they are using the same system of the colonizers mm. how painful it is that how painful you follow people who are founded with a foundation of blood let's stretch it because yeah let's, let's stretch it don't make me cry now <laughs> don't make me cry because uh, this this will become very much sorry i'm coming from the zimbabwean right. space yes. and uh, yes. when you mention those things uh how do you do there, there are other elements in mm. me that mm. get get moved mm. but i want us to go back to the to the royal houses yes. in terms of the royal house being a custodian mm. therefore yes. of uh, of a person and I know we, are, we, we move a bit, maybe pick up instances <laughs> where women, because I know while people are watching at home there, some people are beginning to ask what happens in the event. Do we have history yeah. where women have actually assumed power to, to run in? Uh, as... it's, a, it's a good question because in the early hours of the morning, uh. I was having a conversation with the courts uh. on that particular matter. They prepared you. They prepared. Now you, you now you now you know what is happening to you. I like I like the also happening to I like you. the scenage. I like the scenage. Because a woman as the mother or a wife to the king does not have authority. Mm. She is just there to assist. They work together with the king. If the king has died, mm. the the woman does not become a regent mm. queen. No, it does not happen that way. Mm. That's why there is what we call a, a royal council. Mm. In that royal council, because these are people of divine spirit, mm. the chair becomes the regent mm. until that particular person who is designated to be in charge. Roles are clear. Roles are clear. Roles are clear. It's all this power struggle. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. But, but of course, in the all, all times of Congo, mm. in some parts of Ethiopia, mm. we have histories where mm. actually ladies picked up spears and went to war and some of them ended up now, running now, as kings. Now, now, now that is different. Mm. We are talking about war situation yeah. where you find out in the royal house somebody has to assume authority because remember, yes. Yes. that is different. Mm. Here I'm speaking from this, the spirituality point yes. of view. Mm. When, when here we are talking about a place where there is no blood spilled. It's a clean space. Absolutely. There's no... It's, this is the ideal. Absolutely. This is what it Absolutely. must be like. Then, then, then in that spaces where blood has been spilled, remember, it's, there's no divinity in there. Yeah. So everything that has been put together there, it is not of God. And I have no authority mm. to be speaking on a dead by it. space. By it. By, by it. it. By it. As, let's go back on this issue of the custodianship. Yes. Because I think we have got some meat right yes. there. Yes. So firstly, we identify a king be a custodian yes. of the spirituality yeah. of the environment. Yes. He's the custodian of the land. And that person must be peaceful. Peaceful. That person must must have been div uh, 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 defined or molded 
by the principles of spirituality. Mm. A humble person, mm. not a person who who, who violent ye, crime ye, anger. Mm. Mm. A king is somebody who has those qualities. Is a person who who is full of divinity in his spirit. Humble. You understand? Mm. It becomes his culture. It, you know, it becomes his tradition. Mm. It becomes his custom. Mm. You understand? That's why they will they will say some of them that who stole this these qualities. They will say, "You hit me this side, I give you this other side." Mm. That is the type of person that we are talking about. I want us to move to this yes. very interesting corner yes. because you mentioned that uh, they collect the soil yes. from the four corners yes. of the kingdom. Yes. Yes. Then they will mold them in yes. whatever way. Yes. Yes, and yes. either put them on yes. a stick or yes. put them in a, in yes. a kudu yes. horn or whatever. Yeah. It, it could be the horn, yeah. it could be the stick. Because in that space, that's why they will say, if that particular thing that has been put together, mm. if you are not the heir to the throne, mm. it will disappear. Yeah. And in ancient times, yes. they would actually f fight a war, yes. and the war was not done yes. until they find that horn. That horn. Because, because it gives... Authority. 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 Of, but what I wanted us to look at the grains of uh, of the grains of soil yes. that are in the horn. Yes. Because for me, those grains of soil represent not only the ground, not only the trees, not only the flowers, not only the mountains, yes. but they represent the families. The families. That's why you hear word when they say, when Pungani was alive, mm. life was not like this. Mm. We had prosperity. It goes to what you are saying. Now, I want us to move to this, to this particular corner, yes. where the royal house, yes. and this, this for me is very critical, yes. and I want you maybe to give me two mm. or three examples yes. that can qualify this yes. factor. Oh. The royal house is the library Indeed. of the community, yes. where the king himself can interpret every grain of soil yes. that is within mm. his calabash. Yes. To know Umlochwa, how did he end up in our tribe? That's true. Uskosana, how did he end up getting That's attached here? That's true. Uputwa, how did he end up getting That's attached true. here? And, and give a sort of a quick narrative, okay. including those that have visited and knowing how everybody, so that we don't just look at royal houses yes. as political uh, structures, mm -hmm. but I want us to actually verify yes. and authenticate the value of uh, of royalty within a society that they are a living library yes. of communal information and knowledge systems that link the families that are within a certain environment together to the common stem that becomes the I'll, royal house i'll i'll make a practical example mm. uh, <clears throat> busobengwe yes sir busobengwe uh, becomes the one that takes charge of kingship by it king Bungani the first mm. where it happened it happened where we are in Pumalanga mm -hmm. in that environment you have a first child is called Lemin mm -hmm. that's where the Lamin has come from yes mm -hmm. you've got the second one is called Mutanga that's where the devil has come from you've got another one is called Kaba Kaba Amazulula they call themselves Zulus and they are not Zulus. No, what, uh, yes. what tribe are they? They are from Embo because they are the children of Busobengwe. Okay. And then the one that follows after Kaba is Msimango. Msimango. That's yeah. why you... The, you the hear, yeah, the, I'm, 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 I'm yeah, giving those extensions. I know, I know. I know. Now they, they are not Shanganese again. Now they are identifying themselves yes, as Shanganese and they are not. But in fact, they are they Embo. Are, they are Embo. Then, this Msimango, you would hear... Their praises are similar to the one of Kaba. Oh, Tabi Zolo. Amazalan Kosila. Oh, Kaba. Nalaba. Then there is another one. Uh, his name is Mtim Kulu. Mm. Mtim Kulu is the last born of Busobengwe. Mm. Then Busobengwe. Then, uh, 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 then has this Mtim Kulu. Then Mtim Kulu becomes the father of Zigote. Zigote whom today they refer themselves as Abagazwane. Mm -hmm. Tina, eh, Aswona, eh, in Abasembo. Mm. Eh, Tina, 
but sometimes they do refer to themselves as a mm -hmm. because Honka Mampembe mm -hmm. are from Embo. Mm -hmm. They are from the very same house of Embo Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Then you've got uh, the Ngobos. Yes. When you listen to their praises, mm. what does it say? It says, uh, Mm -hmm. The hard devils, what do they say? Amashi amashi jenga nyamaza. Same. Amakati la. I got an interesting uh, SMS <laughs> in the course of the week. Yes. Uh, I want us to build on yes. this concept of yes. umtimkul. Yes, yes, yes. Umti omkul. Umuti yes. omkul. My cousin, yes. blood cousin, the elder sister to my father, yes. Lazarus. Yes. Anna is oh. her name. Oh. She got married to a Zambian the man. Uh, Mr. Chitsanga. Oh. Now, Chitsanga is reeds. Oh. Okay? Yes. So, Chitsanga is a small reed. Yes, exactly. And uh, he, their totems, the Chitsangas, oh. is Chitikulu. Ch you see? So, he, he writes oh. to me oh. a message. He says, oh. I was following yes. your conversation with, oh. the, with King Bunga. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Malume. He now calls me Malume. He says, hey, Malume. I'm, I'm shocked yeah. to actually discover that the whole concept of mutimkul Muti becomes actually the stem yes. through which the greater tribes yes. of the southern hemisphere yes. need to connect themselves. Yes. And I think this part, this part of the show, yes. I don't want you, I, I don't want yes. you to hurry it okay. because uh, it, you have lots of information. Yes. Yes. But if we can just toothpick it yes. nicely yes. so that we can position it again one yes. more time yes. to yes. say, Nangumutomkul, yes. here is the big tree. Yes. Yes. We know this tree is sitting by the rivers yes. of Embo. Yes, it's a picture. It's yes. a picture. I wish I could write a movie. Wa and I, <laughs> the real Wakanda, you know. Oh, yes. There is this big tree oh. that is actually planted next to the rivers of of Embo. And when you are looking onto this tree, oh. now here are the roots. Yes, they are coming out of the Great Nile. Yes. Oh. and the stem stands oh. up. Yeah. And the first stem that we are looking at here is the building of the African kingdoms. Mm. Now, here are the branches mm -hmm. that are coming out of mm. this tree. Mm. So that the Nigerian person out there, yes, yes. they can actually relate to the yes. greater Embo, yes. the Sutus, yes. the, the mm. Zulus, yes. the, the, the Karangas, mm. the Ethiopians, mm. the Kemitic knowledge. Yes. Because right That's now, where many, it comes from. Yeah? That's where it comes from. And, but but we need we needed an education. Absolutely. A program that can begin to orient yes. the, 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 the entire African nation That's true. so that we can begin to look at each other mm. in terms of line of common interest. Mm. And I must say, in one of the uh, posts that I've put, and I put one of your information mm. out, mm. Uh, I got some quite a backlash mm. from some friends from Eastern mm. Cape mm. because now mm. their, their, their interest was how different are we mm. from Bungani there? Uh, how different are we from Mtim Kulu there? We are this and this. I said, you are missing the point. You are missing the point. I am not right. here to be telling you how different you are. Yes. I am here to be telling you how same you are. It's true. It's true. <laughs> if it's if true. you can say, my Mtim Kulu has no edge, yes. this one it's is. It's the same. Can you tell it's me same. in this day and age, someone cannot see a difference between a Jamini and a Jamini? You know, you know, you know, I, uh, you know when I was in, in prison in Robben Island, we, we were moved to a prison called Hellstrom. There was this dark guy who was a prison warder. He's a colored guy. In one of his texts was written, Lamine. When we said to him, Lamine, he says, no, 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 I'm not that. I'm Shlamini. Oh, my word. I'm not black. That's what he said. And he was dark. Can I give you a free, can I give you a live story? Can I give you a live story? Just when a lighter moment. I get to London with a friend, I won't mention the name, it'll be embarrassing. Mm. He's a colored person. Mm. So the, the the immigration paper there mm. requires you to fill in black or whether you're black mm. or you are white mm. uh, or Asian. Mm. Then he gets there and he me I'm not confused. I put my X mm. on the mm. black. Yes. And uh, so there's black, white, Asian. Yes. And then he decides to raise an alarm. And says, I can't see my, my box here <laughs> where I must put my X. Oh. And the, I looked at him and says, what box are you looking for? He's looking for he colors. says, I am not black. Shame. I am not white. I am not, not Asian. Asian. I am colored. I'm looking for a colored box. And it does not exist. And then the immigration officer looks at him and says, please put your X 
on the black. Yes, true. And I enjoyed the argument. He's no. <laughs> I'm saying I am not black. I am colored. He says by saying you are colored, you are saying you are a person black. of color. Kala. So Thank please you. tick the box. You. you are black. Thank you. I've never seen a colored person so disillusioned. Mm. For the first time in their life, to come in face to face with the contact director, that yeah, in fact, you are black for crying out loud. Absolutely, mm. the same guy. He's, he calls himself, "No, I'm colored. I'm not black. I am Shlamini." Mm. But it's, it's Shlamini. We, we all laughed as prisoners, mm. all laughing at him as a as a prison We all laugh. All of you us. don't even know who you are. He said this guy is so ignorant. You know? So let's just go He's back not. for the purpose of Absolute, revision. Absolutely. For the purpose of revision, yeah. let's go back to our um, muti, muti mkulu. Muti Those of you who don't know what muti mkulu mm. means, a big tree. Yes. Muti mkulu, mm. chiti kulu, mm. muti mukuru. Mm. It's one big surname. Mm. And this is not just a surname. Mm. It is actually a picture oh. of a huge tree that stands on the felt of the African continent through which many tribes, if we can look at the, ourselves carefully, you can actually begin to see how we all come from a common ancestry. Mm. This you can trace through your cultural expressions, through your pieces of art, oh. through your crafts, oh. through your what, through your totems, oh through even your synonyms and various uh, rituals that you are doing in your own tribes. They may just vary in terms of time, but the history is exactly the same. We'll be back after the break, and I want us to give the king an opportunity just maybe to break down this tree, to break down this tree for us, and allow us at least as, as a greater Absolutely. African kingdom, and you being the king of Uka yourself, yes. to say, okay, here is the big tree. Yes. And this is how the various branches Absolutely. are coming into place. And some of the fruits have fallen. And from the fruits, other trees have yes. been planted. Yes. And from those yes. plants, other fruits have come. And other trees have planted. And until we can begin to recognize the common source from where we come from, will constantly be divided by the colonial systems of the Berlin Conference. And in our generation, we say no more. No more to foreign education. No more to education that separates us. It's time that Africans, our Keblam, Embo, must start uniting towards that common background, common ancestry, common roots. Our genesis is the same. Our exodus must be the same. Here is the revelation after the break. Feel the heat. Challenge your ordinary. Experience the extraordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Now I believe that my peace is my most valuable asset. Absolutely beautiful! This is exactly what I was looking for! Camping, camping, camping! DJ Khaled! It is a day to celebrate. We're ready for action. I like it when it's nice and soft. Yeah, that yeah. is nice. How was it like growing up in Nigeria? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what it is. Feeling is there that, you know, you're doing something special. Stop being so dramatic, Mira. You should just be what you want to be. Experience the extraordinary with Starset. If you are smart enough and intelligent and look at most of our African crafts as Africans, the way we design our artifacts, uh, in modern days it's a shame that people just carry artifacts and actually don't even understand what they represent. Mm. But in ancient times you would find that our old people were so smart that every shell that you put on a piece of stick like this would be representing a certain amount of history. And there will be crafted so nicely together that actually by the time you are holding a piece of artifact in your hand you are actually holding a full library of information and I'm so happy this afternoon to be sitting with a mobile library so that we can be able to identify ourselves as a great African people. Before we went for the break I wanted the king to introduce us to the great big tree Muti Omkur. What is this Muti Mkulu, Chitikulu 
uh, story we always hear about Bayete. which forms the foundation Bayete. of the embo. Bayete. What it means, it means the following. We came from the Congo, from the Great Lakes. All of us as the Bantu people, with refers Bantu people. And all of us, they have, our father is Zomo Ngang. Mm. The, this is his name. Mm. And then he had the following children. And these children had to be occupying the land that we refer as the continent today of Africa. Mm. And some call me Lomo. Yes. Some Omo. Yes. So, so yes. It, it must actually be. We must Even just... the Jewish people call him Shlomo. Uh. They know him. They, cl they claim him, yes. Mm. The Jews. <laughs> then. The, this becomes our Adam. Yes. A, this, a, yes. A, yes. Absolutely. A, as, as, absolutely. As, as, he becomes the Adam. I see. As, not not Noah. Yeah. He becomes the Adam. The Adam. He then fathers the following children. Number mm. Abantu Anawaka Adam. Yes. Asambe Asambe Kosia. The first one is Mkiz. Mm. Second one. Is a uh, uh, Mtuwa mm. whom we refer as Ukumalo, mm. Bakuluman Nabandu. Mm. And then it's Mpele. Mm. After Mpele, Mpele. is Bukwa. Mpele. Mpele. Mm. Uh, then he says, My children, from today, the names that I gave you are your names. But the same name that you must bear, all of you, mm. from generations to generations to come, mm. you must remember that your same name is Bukwa. Mm. What do I mean by saying so? I mean that a child when he's born, when he's one month, mm. is taken to the river and smeared the clay of the river because that's where I come from. Mm. And by smearing that clay, you then wash that, that child, the aroma then connects with the waters. It connects with where I come from. Mm. Then you cover this child with the leopard skin. Mm. When the child is one year, you do a certain ritual with the gold liquid that you find in the knees and the, the legs of the goat. You smear the child on the knees and all the joints. Then you put what we call a spandle. Mm. Then as these children were multiplying, mm. they give birth or they, they beggar the, the, the children that you would find among mm Elengele. -hmm. You find them in Nigeria today. Mm. Bunkele, Nkele, mm -hmm. Nkele. Nkele is the crab. Yes. Then he then says the ritual after <laughs> when the child is born, <laughs> You take the placenta mm. of that child, you give it to the crabs, back to where I come from. Mm. Then what will then happen is that you must always remember that your surname is Ugupu. Mm. Then you have Abo Ngelengele. Ngelengele then has these this different children who are spreading the, the whole continent, who are occupying the whole continent. Some of them go to Nigeria, some of go to, to Cameroon, what we will name as Cameroon today. Would, they will go to Ivory Coast, then they will spread. Then, then Ngelengele have the other children that I would, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would name as the following. You would have the child that is referred as a uh, Masibu. Mm. <laughs> After Masibu, there is Lubelo. After Lubelo, you have what we call Ubu Sobengwe. Mm. Then he then explains to the children and to the entire family that a stick is then given to Buso Bengwe. The last born is Mazibugo. Mm -hmm. These are the people who were crossing the river by the side of the river. Then, 
So this speaks to the migration. Absolutely, it speaks to migration. We then move from 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 the Congo into into Zambia, Zambia into Zimbabwe, mm. Zimbabwe. Then the people then. Uh, you know, a person then takes the people across the Limpompo River, it was Busobengwa, mm -hmm. into Mtonjenwekwa, the source of the Val River today. Mm. L let me be very blunt, yes. so that young children can follow. Yes. I, I, I can follow yes. very well. So basically what we are talking about right now is the migration of what we want to call the South African history yes so let's, 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 let's just make it so speaking plain so, language so 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 uh i forgotten one child mm -hmm. who was who was who was the child of of uh, ngelengele is a uh, 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 kribi kribi then fathers the following children Tosa mm. and tembo mm. and other children when they were crossing the limpombo river mm or the Zambezi River, mm. for argument's sake, yeah. they broke the chain. Because let's, t let's go back again in the olden days when mm. they were crossing a river, yes. then uh, men would hold each That's other's true. hands true. across the river, then people would uh, yes. be holding yes. to each other yes. while they are crossing. Yes. So there was a tide. That, that is a tide, that is the chain that I'm talking about. Yes. They broke these children. They were pushed by the current, they were pushed by the river. Mm. In those el, uh, old, olden days, mm. they would wait for the river to come down. Mm. They thought it was ready, but unfortunately, the chain was broken. That's how you would end up, you would find the Botswanas. Mm. You would find the, 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 ba, ba, uh, you know, Bakalangas. Mm. You would find, uh, 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 you know, those people that you find in Zambia, you find what, mm. what? some some Lozis, started to start yes, the Abalozi, yeah. Abapemba, the Tongas, yeah. yes, the Tongas. Mm. Because what happened is that some of would say no, we we want we want we want we want proceed. We'll with, stay here. Yeah, we'll stay here. Mm. But the fact remains, all of them came from the same, same tree. Mti Omkul. If you go to Zambia today, you find the people who once lived in Angola. Mm. As I said, we were in the Congo. They then moved to Zambia. Some of them moved to Angola. Mm. And then those today of the Chitimkulu, they once lived and occupied what we call Angola. In those days, it was called Kola. Kola. Yes. K O L A. Mm. Kola. Mm. And then the language that was spoken in those days, mm. it is what we are told today that it is the language of the Koi and the Sense. Mm. And it is not true. Mm. Because if you go today in Tanzania, mm. you find people of the Hatsebe. People. Hatsebe. Hatsebe. That sounds like Swazi. Absolutely. Because it would say there is no. Absolutely. They are, they, 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 yes, it's called the Tekele language. Yes. Hatsebe. You find them in Tanzania. And when you look at their history, it says they've been there for tens and tens of thousands of years. Of years being there these are hadza people hadza they speak the language that it is today told that it is the language of the koi mm. and the sand and that's not true and you go to the, nigeria find the house you see it is the same people because what happens is that the child when he's born he's given a a certain portion to be living there and people who then tend to follow his style of leadership mm. and they stay they they tend to surround that particular child mm. and this is this is the migration you go today in Kem in 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 morocco mm. yeah i want to talk about morocco mm. you when we we visited morocco we found the same paintings that are, we are told these are paintings of the koi sense here here you find them in morocco and when you ask these people from who drew these things, who drew these things, they say it is the people who are referred as the Berber people. Berber, Bembe, what isn't one? that Bembe? Eh, Bembe, Bembe, Bemba. It's actually back to Zambia again. Back to Zambia. Yeah. It simply means we were and the Bemba. nomads. Bemba, Bembe. Yes, we're Bembe. back in Venda. In the in Venda, yeah. we call the Bembe people. Yeah. Bembe. Uh, hey. Bembe. Lembe. I'm Bembe. Yeah. Bembe. Here in South Africa. Hey, man. Now, now you find them in Morocco. Mm. And we were shocked when we found them. They same color like me and you. 
when when my queen was taken to go and speak to the communities there we find people like me and you who live in morocco genuine and these are bembe people I'm on bembe, we we're talking to our people so i want to come back here then 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 what happens is that when these children are growing you find them in zambia as i said you find them around in mtonjenuekwa mm. the source of the val river mm. there was no sutu there was no Zulu. Come on. There was no Shanghai. Now this is gonna get exciting. Yeah, yeah there was no there was mm. no there was no Tonga. There was no whatever. We were one people who came from the Congo, mm. whom we referred as the Bembe people, mm. whom we referred as the people from the cradle of humankind. Mm. What is that cradle of humankind? It's called Embo. Embo simply means what? Origin, the mm. place of origin. Yes. Then these are the children that decide to say, we are going to look for greener pastures. Who's that? Mm. It is Lemini mm -hmm. who goes and find other people who migrated on the other side. Coming from the coastal yes. side. Yes. Mm. Who are those? These are the people of the Tonga. Mm -hmm. Abanbaga Tonga. Wow. Who live today in Tonga land, whom we refer to Mozambique. Mm. Who are those people? Are led by a, a king by the name of Tembe. Mm. Then Tembe says, who are you? Then they explain, they said, then Tembe says, no, we are relatives. Mm. But for interest's sake, my grandmother yeah. is a Tembe. You see. So from Mozambique, actually. Yeah. Now, now, so now. I, I have, I have yeah. an interest. Yeah. When yeah. You Tembe, touch, uh, Tembe says uh, to Lemin, uh, you are my relative. Mm. You my, you, uh, you can occupy a space. But now the problem of Lemin, mm. every time when he comes back in mm. the evening, mm. he comes back with people. Then Tembe says, Mfo, I think the best thing for yeah. you to do mm. is to go to the other side of the Libombo mountain mm. to occupy that space. Mm. It will be good so that me and you, we don't crash because I'm a king. I don't want to fight with you. You are my brother. Mm. Then Lemin then moves with his younger brother, mm -hmm. Mlanga. Umlanga. Umlanga. Who is named after Umlanga, the rings. They go and occupy that place. They found other relatives also. Who were there already? Who were there already? Bosmela. Abosmela. Uh. Oh yes, then they talk, then they agree. They become in charge. Because this Lemin, he's got more people that are following him. Mm -hmm. He becomes the one that assumes the throne. That's how we have the Swazi monarch. Absolutely. Then, then the Lemini. <laughs> it's very interesting. Mm. Then the Lemini. Mm. He stays around, he's in church. And then Mlanga have a child by the name of Musi. Musi. Musi ga Mlanga. Then, then Lamin, uh, uh, Mlanga, when he dies, then Musi says, I know the history that my father comes from Mton mm -hmm. Then he goes back to Mton Genuekwa. Musuka Likwa. That's your place. That's my place. Mm -hmm. Then he stays there. <clears throat> then he decides to say, no, I, I'm not comfortable here. I must look for greener pastures. Mm. Then he goes to a place. He moves along the, 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 the Val River. Mm. Then he goes to a place called Kom mm. The place of the reeds. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then he names that place called Em mm. What it is. Kom no, before Kom uh. Here it is. Uh, you know, at the western area. Yes. He then stays there. Because he is a son with the royal blood, mm. he then assumes leadership. Mm -hmm. Then he decides again to say, you know what? <coughs> again, I'm not comfortable here. Mm. He then goes and looks for greener pastures. Mm. He goes to a place called Bonacourt, Etswane. Mm -hmm. And then some of the other people are being left around. As he's moving, he's leaving people around. Yes. But they know they pay allegiance to who. True. Then he goes to a place and says, here, I'm not moving anymore. Mm. This place will be named after my father. Mm. And this place will be called Guamlang. Mm. Then the same Musi has the following children also. Mm. Abum Tombeni, mm -hmm. Mwatuba, the list goes and on and on. Then Tombende says, no, I'm looking for greener pastures. He's the one then established the kingdom of the vendor. Kingdom. Mm. <laughs> Very trusty. Uh -huh. Mtombe. Mm. 
as you see in that story mvango mtombe mm. they give respect to the child of moose mm. then he's got these clans that are there then in natal there is a child who becomes the first king of natal mm. who is the son of who of uh, Zigot. Zigot. This is Hatem. Uhatem. Uhatem. He then lives in the place called Leng today. Leng. He's the one then enters. Northern Kwazulu Natal. Yes. Then he enters the, the, the wife of his brother. Uloma mm. Shubi. Uloma Shubi. He's, he's the same Hatem again who moves away from Natal into the Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. Now you're. Your question is answered. Yeah. Why is it Arha and then the one, the other one is Ha ha with an A. The other one is DZ Za is the same. Is the same thing. So it, it, we can establish as a fact yes. that the first royal house. Come on, speak. Don't worry. We are here to establish the truth. We are here to deal with the truth. Not what the, the colonizers has put together, but the truth, the indigenous leadership. I'm allowing to speak. I'm breathing. By it. <laughs> From Likwa, the cradle where yes. the tribes yes. or the families rather. Yes. Who cross the Zambezi? Yes. Cross the Congo, yes. cross Zambezi, yes. cross the Limpopo to come into South Africa. Yes. They end up at this uh, the source of the Val River. Absolutely. M20 where the entire this uh, dispersing yes. of the South African tribes yes. emanates from yes. into into tribes. Yes. The royal house that was resident at that moment is Mtimkulu. It is Hatem Mtimkulu. It is Pungani. In Rubeza Milem Tondo and Gaso Tondos. One kingdom, not other kingdoms. Thus, we possess the powers of connecting with God. That's why when we bury, we speak to the mountain, it opens. Show me another kingdom that has those powers. Show me one kingdom that bears those powers of speaking to a mountain, then it opens, then we bury a king. Wait. There's no other one except us. And there's no other kingdom that has the authority of speaking to the waters. Last time we went to a place where Bungani II was conducting his rituals of installing a king. When we were there, I have the evidence of it. When we were there, when I first spoke, stars came out of the river, of the water. They were sprinkling out of the river, giving this sound. So then suddenly there were there were white kettles around the river mm. and goats and chickens they were white women were ululating because they've never seen that because why because the one who has authority is there we moved to the grave of Pungani the second when we spoke to that grave it exploded by it a red smoke came out of that mountain. It gave that sound like Then we said, everybody was ululating to say, for the first time, the right person is here. Mm. When I visited His Majesty King Muswati, when he was asking me to dance with him, where there was no cloud, rain came from the sky he asked me um petelu mutina mm. i didn't know the right person is here today to come and bless your place Buy it. so all what i'm trying to say to you mm. is that we are the custodians not thugs not crooks who are wearing the military regalia of the colonizers we are the custodians of the traditional rulership that is connected with God. Look how God is so great. Mm. In this time, in this day 
of age. He brings me to connect with him. Who am I? Wait. He makes me to understand the very same trees, the same medicine. He shows me things and he converses with me at night and during the day. When God asked me to pronounce, you see, a lot of people don't understand. I want to clear this thing today. Mm. When I spoke <coughs> at the Pan African Parliament, when I pronounced Nkosa Zanazuma, it was not me who was pronouncing her. It was the courts who pronounced her. I engaged with the courts. I said, I, I don't think it's right for me to. God says, You are our messenger. You are the ambassador. We are sending you to pronounce this woman. We have a reason why we are pronouncing this woman. Hmm. I did that. And then the courts came back to me and say, You have done what we have asked you to do. Step aside now. You will see what is going to happen to this country. Because they did not listen to us, these people. What is happening to this country? By it. Because they thought they were clever than the courts. Mm. All what we need to do is to follow what the courts are saying, to do the right thing. Mm. Because the foundation <coughs> that we are having today, mm. it is a foundation that is it's a foundation that is, is crafted with blood. Mm. What we needed to do in nineteen ninety four, we need to clear this the space today. If you hate me, you hate me. If you love me, you love me. I don't care. Uh, so, Tomas Buyalapo, when we come back after the break, we want to go into this uh, in depth the involvement of a king over a kingdom as a priest and as a mediator to be dealing with catastrophes and issues. And in the event that wrong things should happen to a nation, who is the right person Absolutely. to approach the gods? Absolutely. Who is the right person to approach the land? And what sort of ceremonies and traditions and rituals must be done if a land and a country and a nation and a continent wants to cleanse itself? Africa has been bathed in blood for ages past. Mm. Some of the blood has been caused by colonizers. Some of the blood has been caused by our own fellow black people. Both domestic and political warfare that are raging. We have graveyards that are full. And uh, by the way, I might want also to pass a comment on the South African government digging graves before people even die. But uh, that will be a conversation just after the break with King Bungani the Third here on your program Sankofa. Don't go away. We'll be back just after the break. The day will come when these measures are no longer needed. Until then, however, we must ensure that all our people receive adequate support. We look ahead to a better future. I have faith in the strength and the resilience of ordinary South Africans who have proven time and time again throughout our history that they can rise to any challenge that is presented to our country. We shall recover. We shall overcome. King has a responsibility and we wish to pass this message to the politicians also 
that don't, don't play with shoes that are too big for you. And many of you have been involved in processes that have messed up the society. You have killed people, you are killing people, and it's not they're going to stop. You will still kill people in the future. Your track record is that of murder and crime. Together with the colonizers, the Europeans, together with the multinational companies, uh, the CIAs, the KGBs, and, uh, and uh, the various instruments of intelligence that hunt people like foxes and butcher them and dump them in shallow mines, poisoning them and killing them, messing up the environment and the community in terms of spirituality. We're having a conversation today with the Honorable uh, His Royal Highness King Bungani. I want to ask him a very important question, because I'm aware South Africa has gone through war. Botswana, you could have been lucky, not that bad. Mozambique, blood stained. Zambia, blood stained. Zimbabwe, we'll all cry. Congo, 15 million earlier on, it's not stopping. You can go to Libya, you can go to Liberia, you can go to Nigeria, Biafra. Name all the African countries. Tell me which country and which president can raise up his hand that in his hands there is no blood that is dripping from those hands. We're here to be talking to the royal houses and seeing what sort of spirituality are we creating in terms of the atmospheric spaces in which we're working in. Is politics giving us the answers that we need? Can we continue to live in such an environment that is defiled by so much corruption and blood-stained hands? What would a king have to do to cleanse? I want us to take this part very nicely, uh, Honorable Your Royal Highness. Right. And this, is, this for me is critical. When soldiers are coming from war, let's start from there, before we can deal with innocent blood that is spilled uh, in, a, in, a, in an environment. I'm glad the other day we spoke about rape and we cleaned up that one nicely. We pushed it away. When soldiers go to war with their swords and spears, kill whatever you must kill because the environment demands war. Again, I know we're dealing with an environment of war here, but we must be men of peace. But where war is activated into space and we defile ourselves as, as a nation in terms of engaging in physical wars that spilled blood. When soldiers came back from war, did we allow these soldiers from war straight into their women's houses or there was a ceremony of stopping them at a river, bath them? Come, I just wish Absolutely. to give you some space Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And I want you to take your time to Absolutely. explain to us the reason why was it important to have a cool off period of military men warriors of war who are coming from war with their spears dripping with blood and what was the danger of allowing a man with a dripping spear full of blood to walk back into in, in his homestead and continue his life what sort of what in ancient times how was it done remember remember the the blood that we are talking about that human that we are talking about The spirit that is breathing, mm. it's not his, mm. it's God's. You don't have authority to kill. You don't have authority to spill blood. Mm. So the question is, if it happened that you have done that, mm. remember, you, you are not in, in, in position of authority mm. of being a king. You've misaligned already. Yeah, we are talking about now soldiers, mm. warriors. Now, in the ancient times, what they will do, these warriors will never enter the land mm. of the gods, meaning the land where we are ruling with these dripping blood spears. Mm. Do we have to, to meet with the seers at the river? Mm -hmm. The seers would be responsible with a certain contingent the team would be washing these spears with a certain medicine mm -hmm. and they will be also cleansing these soldiers washing them washing them washing their clothes and they will be there for certain days before they can come into meeting with their families mm. so that they don't bring that aroma that is not good into the space of this land because remember this is a sacred land mm. Mm. 
they will do that. And you remember a practical example. When Ndombazi, the mother to Zwite, mm. when she gave her back to the warriors, that was abomination. Mm. What happened, all warriors had to take a certain medicine and go and wash in the river. Mm. Now, that's not blood. I'm talking mm. about just showing her nakedness mm. to these warriors. Mm. That was an abomination. Now, imagine if you have spilled the blood. It's worse. It's worse. So in the ancient times, you would wash those spears, you would wash those people, cleanse them. There are those you would, you would see spiritually to say, these are people that are no longer welcomed mm. in this particular environment. Mm. They would have to be given a particular place and to be honored to say, you would live here, we thank you for one, two, three, but you're no longer welcome into you the can't come into the palace. You can't come those into the palace. Those that are really have Absolutely. serious issues, Absolutely. that they the hideous Absolutely. crimes. Now, the second one that you asked me, in those days, as people came back from the, the, the wars, mm. remember the space, I'll make a practical example of South Africa. Mm. In South Africa, a lot of people were killed. We can start from the colonial, uh, colonial times when there was the wars of resistance. Mm. During that time, when we took power in 1994, did we cleanse those blood? I don't think so. Mm. Let's come again. After the wars of resistance, people were killed during the times of these governments mm -hmm. as they were, they were continuing to rule by force. Mm -hmm. The homestead, the homestead governments. Yeah. Before the, uh, the, uh, the Bantu states, the Bantu did, we, did we wash that blood? No. Mm -hmm. I can even go back to the time in Memorial mm -hmm. where King Shaka was there. Lot of blood was spilled mm -hmm. during the Mfekane Wars. Mm -hmm. What did we do? Did we wash that blood? No. no. Let's continue to the Bantu stands. Mm. Let's continue to the to the days of the seventies when those young children Shabville were uh, yeah, Soweto. Shabville, Soweto, we mm. did not wash that blood. We go into the black on black violence mm. in the eighties during the times of the uh, uh, you know of the nineties. Mm. We did not wash that blood. Prisons, yeah, prisons, police stations. People were killed during the time when they were working. Uh, digging potatoes with their hands. They, we did not wash them. Mm. Then we come in 1994. We want to say a foundation the new democracy. of the new democracy is being founded. Remember, how can you found a very same new democracy in a house that is full of blood, that is the union building? The same house that of parliament in Cape Town. Do you think we're that planned, house was cleansed? We plans to murder black people. We carried Do out. you know the foundation of that house? How was it put together for that particular structure to be what it is today? What spirit controls that? Do you know the very same monument that we are talking about, the Fort Tricker? What was the foundation that was used to hmm. to put that structure today? Then you come and say you have a new dawn, a new, new rainbow nation. Rainbow nation. Mm. So these are the things that we need to deal with. Mm. Before I forget, the very same soldiers who were part of MK, mm. I will never talk about APLA because I don't know anything about them. MK. You were there? I was there. Mm. They fought wars in Angola against the UNITA rebels, mm. against the Buffalo battalions. Mm. Many of them died. Their graves are still in Angola. Mm. Did we cleanse those souls and bring them back home? Tanzania. Tanzania. Did Zambia. we, yeah, all these people, did we bring them back home? And did we cleanse those, those, those bloods that were spilled in Angola during the, the, the Northern Front and the Eastern Front? No. So how then do you become a nation that will be prosperous if you've got all these skeletons you in your cupboard? You finish the business. Then you come and want to rule the very same land that is full of blood that has never been cleansed. Then you think there will be prosperity? No. 
There mm. won't be prosperity. That's why things are like this. Because number two, you become the president of this country, but you were never delivered to the gods of this country. Mm. The very same democracy. I don't remember them calling upon the courts to say, when you have sent us in 1990, uh, 1912 to form this organization, mm. to go and get the land that has been stolen, mm. to go and restore the cultures and the traditions of our forefathers, mm. we have now reached this level in 1994. We are bringing you we are bringing, what bringing you back. send us we, to do. We, we are now delivering, deliv delivering it to you, the forefathers. Tell us how then do we move forward. Wow. I don't think that was done. Wow. That's cool. That's why we've got all these problems that we are accumulating day by day. That's why our children today, you'd find them they being children of Nyaupes. That's why our children today, they will continue with the legacy of the colonizers of England. That's why our children today, they will continue speaking English, they will continue with teaching, they will continue living the life of the colonizers. That's why our children today, they will see you as the person who's backward because you are still wanting to touch base with your traditions, with your cultures. When you ask our children in the streets, what is your surname? They give you a name of a person. And when you ask them, what is your praises? They don't know. Mm then that foundation, it simply means it is wrong. Mm. I am calling upon these leaders to go back to the foundation, to mm. go back to the origin and do the right thing. Let me tell you, if they do that, if they cleanse this land mm. and they ask permission to rule from their forefathers, let me tell you, South Africa will prosper. Wow and other countries in the Congo will prosper. And those countries in Nigeria, everywhere, if you do exactly what I've said, let me tell you, prosperity would be your name. Because while you're on that, what is very critical is, is actually, to, and thank you very much for By coming it. up forthright on this By issue, it. that maybe the, the, our present democratic governments uh, exercised great negligence Absolutely. in terms of maybe undermining. For example, if I just interrupt you, when you come to, to me, you want to tell me about Nkume Nkwaruma, and who's this guy, Nkwame Nkwaruma. Mm. You are not saying nothing. You are, you, uh, you are not saying anything to me. Mm. Because this foundation, it's the same foundation of the colonialist. Mm. When you want to talk about Thomas Sankara, he continued with the same legacy of the colonialist. I want somebody to tell me, to say, I am decolonizing. I want the foundation of the system to collapse to collapse and to be linked mm. with the very same foundation mm. of spirituality wow. the wow. same foundation that will then define you to be a nation that is humble a nation that is prosperous mm. not what you are telling me about because these people that you are talking about these are people who've got blood in their hands mm. they've never been cleansed wow and I'm glad you, you came out quite forthright Absolutely. on the on the issue of uh, the present governments, actually, not only one. Yeah. The, what you are talking about is not only South African Absolutely. problem. No. It's actually an entire Absolutely. African, African the foundation is wrong. problem. The foundation of democracy has been wrong. You know what somebody said to me at the VIP launch in Zambia one day, who's one of the dignitaries? He said to me, let me define democracy to you. He says it's a demon that is crazy, <laughs> that possesses the people. My word. My word. And I want us to build, I want us to build uh, slightly on that yeah. in terms of uh, the cleansing yeah. and the, 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 the negligence yeah. that democracy did when moving into power and they used colonial systems of assu assuming authority over the land yes. and totally undermining the the, 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 yeah. the rights and rituals of, of, of preparation for entrance. But where we started our conversation, Absolutely. we started off with uh, how to inaugurate a king, Absolutely. how to Same. how to set him apart, yeah. uh, what calabash he must drink. Yeah. And yeah. it would be interesting actually to see if our present presidents can be taken to the calabash if they will survive the yeah. calabash. Absolutely. If they are wrongly appointed, they will die immediately. I drank that medicine. I drank, I still repeat it, I drank that medicine. And, uh, and what I like, what my uncle says, uh, you know, my, my father, uh, my father's brother says, 
I, I said to him, were you that cruel when I talked to him? Were you that cruel to make sure that I drink? He says, it is the custom, it's a tradition. Mm. You it must be done, it must be done. It must be done. And uh, all of us, we took a little bit. All the children are being DNA'd by that medicine in the family. Mm. But, but you, you took a pot. You took a pot because you <laughs> must be the one that assumes power. You know, whole pot. Just to so, so, so it will be very interesting uh, to see people who assume power in the leadership of presidency and the cabinet. You must minister. put all of them in yes, one place. They will and say, there is a pot here uh, which you must drink from. Yeah, they will the, the one who is appointed oh. will survive. Oh, yeah. But I want to say what I'm saying again on the basis of the Zimbabwean story. Yes, yes, and yes. I, I know it's, sens it's sensitive. Yes, yes. But it must be spoken. It must we, be are spoken. Already, we are already. Mm -hmm. We're already in the south. The truth sa shall set you free. I want us maybe just yeah. to, for a, mm. to put yeah. context yeah. to the conversation. Yeah. I want us maybe just to follow up Mzilikazi yeah. and qualify yeah. uh, whom Zilikas is yeah. and whom yeah. Zilikas is not. And his migration into Zim, yeah. and, but of interest, yeah. is not just the historical background. Yeah. But I want us to pick up the blood trail that happens on Mzilikas' yeah. hands. And I want us to meet also the Shona blood trail, uh, creating this pool of a contaminated Zimbabwean political environment, which we find ourselves now, yeah. and what could possibly be the possible solutions as far as you are looking into Absolutely. that space. You, you see, uh, when you go back to the times and memorials of Mzilikas, Mzilikas was the, 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 the chief of staff of Shark whom white people refer as Shaka Zulu, celebrated as the best warriors of the world. Mm. He was the chief of staff who did the dirty work. For Shark. For Shark. Dirty hands. Dirty work. What do we mean by dirty work? A dirty work where you would go and invade a space where there is peacefulness, where you kill people and take what belongs to them, their livestock. To me, that is not holy. It's not, it's not, it's not divine. Mm. And then he will bring these kettles to Shaka and say to Shaka, these are the kettles Shaka says, give me the white ones and take the brown and the black. Mm. You've got blood in your hands. Mm. St stolen, stolen cows. Without the permission of the owner. You stole what does not belong to you. You have taken what does not belong to you. Let's continue again. Whilst he's doing that, he then decides one day to say, I cannot do this thing until I die. I want total independency from this. He gets tired of stealing. He, he, absolutely. But does not stop stealing. Yes. <laughs> no, no. He says, I cannot be under this man. Mm. Then he decides to say, I'm going to go. But he does not live alone. He commits another abomination. Mm. You know what is that abomination? He steals women without the permission mm. of their parents. These young girls. Wow. He takes them falsely and lives with them in what we place Wazu. In what we call Wazu. Uh -huh. As he's going up, he does the same thing. Takes kettles, he kills people, Take he women. takes women. He arrives here at the Inner uh, Free Park. Mm. He lives around there. He does that in Runback. But before that Runback, there's a place called Tabayabatswana, mm. where the headquarters of uh, uh, Rainwater is. Mm. He finds the Batswanas. He moves them, he takes the wives, takes the kettles, he moves away. He comes here into Swan, he does the same thing. But when he's here in Swan, mm. he, he finds no man, these are my relatives. Mm. While they were fighting. Then he says, I'm sorry, I can't be fighting, I need to move forward. For the north. Now he has taken a lot of women, a mm. lot of people. Sutus, yes. Zulu, absolutely. He goes up, Fana. yes, he goes with them to Zimbabwe. He, uh, he arrives in Zimbabwe, he does the same thing. Hmm. Pushes people, and then he lives in the place. Kobulawa. He says, La, Kugabulawai. Gulang, Pelela, Kona. 
Kwabla wana gela. Even the, seals it in blood. Yes. Kwabla wana. Absolutely. Now these are things that what we need to do to cleanse that foundation that is not right. Mm. And to come and ask for forgiveness mm. from those all mothers. the tribes. Yes. We must ask for forgiveness from all these tribes where these women were forcefully taken, where these cattle were forcefully taken, and say, we are asking for forgiveness. We are sorry. Mm. Then we then cleanse the blood in Zimbabwe, the foundation mm. of this kingdom mm. of Gwa, or, 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 mm. Then the foundation will be clean. Mm. Then we move to another phase. Mm. As the the, the Ndebeles, we then engage with the Zimbabwean people. The Zimbabwean people also, the Chonas must do the same mm. on the other side. Yeah. Must also cleanse the, the, the wrong things that they've done in terms of spilling blood. Mm. Then they come together to say, from today, mm. we are founding one kingdom with spirituality. Mm. No more blood that must be spilled in this land. Wow. Was my engagement with the greater Ndebele tribe, I want us to maybe to come back yeah. just after the break, where we are maybe going to try and pick one country like Zimbabwe yeah. and look for possible solutions right yeah. there. But my question with the Ndebele monarch at one time was, how do you leave your nation as a chief and you end up as a king in another place place when your king so so to speak is still alive in 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 south africa how do you want to build another monarch on the country of zimbabwe when, just after the break it's going to get very interesting as we pick up the mind and uh, some few tips from king bungane don't go away we'll be back right after the break It has been a wonderful journey as we are heading for the last two segments of our presentation and conversation here with King Bungane. And if there are politicians out there, if there are business people out there, if there are traditional indigenous leaders out there, kings and chiefs alike, if there are people that have blood in their hands, governments that are founded on war and great misunderstandings, there's no better time but to take notes and take numbers because we needed to start having a serious program of how do we cleanse our land, how do we cleanse our governments, even better still, how do we cleanse our families? Because some of you people went to war, your fathers and uncles killed people in the That's war, true. and some of them are still killing people in the That's war. True. You look around your family now, you don't understand how, how come things are going bad in your own family, and yet you don't want to admit that one amongst you is full of blood in their own hands. Mm. We're Africans. We know these things are a reality in all of us. And the blood of Jesus does not cleanse a crime. Never. It will you never. You need to put these things aside. You don't go and kill people around yeah. and you come back around and say, Sing and I'm speaking in tongues. Tongues my foot. Things that must be done, must be done to clean up the environment. Retribution must be paid up. Dowries must be paid up. Children that are out of wedlock must be accounted for. Rape cases must be accounted for. 
group where still murders, crimes must be accounted for. And I want to challenge South African governments. I want to challenge African governments. You have soldiers who are constantly killing machines, who have blood dripping in their hands. Mm. For how long are we going to be sitting around this black cloud hovering up over our own countries? Where still, when we elect each other into positions of power, and we know that one amongst us is equally dirty like we are. To even elect each other mm, mm. on the basis of who killed more. And we are only afraid to mention these names and, and isolate them. But I think we are learning something from this show. It is time now that we start looking for spiritual solutions. The African problems are not just economic. They're not just political. They're not just academic. They're not agricultural. They are not environmental. If you undermine this factor, you'll have lost the whole equation. Spiritual problems are solved spiritually. Economic problems will be solved economically. And what we are sitting with today is King Bungani III, right. who is giving us a beautiful background in terms of the cleansing of the environment. And I cut you short just before the break, when we are now beginning to reconcile and bringing the, the Ndebele people into space, bringing the Shona people. And by the way, the name Ndebele itself, yes. according to your definition yes. right now, yes. it can no longer be a hybrid name. Right. Because inside the Mzilikazi raids, mm. you actually find in Zimbabwe right now in Mbembezi area, in, Loa, in, in Ngweru area, there are horses there. I'm a thing. They're there. I'm a Ndiwen wa kona lapo, Nguma lo wa kona, I'm a Tswana wa kona, I'm a Ndebele wa kona. And all the tribes that mm. Mzilikazi was actually plundering as mm. he was going up north. So that by the time you actually come up with a tribe that says we are Ndebele people, mm. Singapore Twakas, I think it's just glorifying a trail of, of, of crime and murder and thuggery and thief and, 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 and lots of stuff that happened. I don't want to condone and I will not condone yeah. what Gukura Wundi did on the Matebelele side. It was wrong. It was very wrong. It must be condemned yes. outright. But in my tribe again, there's a proverb that say that in a leopard yes. is a very interesting animal. Yeah. When he kills them, he drags them into the mud, mm. ravages them on the ground mm. until their skins are full of dust. Mm. But when the same leopard, <laughs> when his skin is wallowed in the mud, he complains and says, mine is too beautiful. That's true. It cannot be contaminated. Your comment, my honorable <laughs> king, you can hear me. <laughs> By it. Uh, By it. Uh, so, my humble plea, mm is that we need to go back to the basics. Mm. Whatever wrong that has happened, we need to deal with that and mm. cleanse it. Don't forget that Livingston mm. also took people mm. in the Eastern Cape there you go. who ended up in the what we call today in, in Matebele land, mm. who are referred as Amat in Amatebele land, they are not. Mm. Don't forget that during the Fekane Wars, people were running away. Mm. Some, yes, were taken by Mziligas, mm. but some of them... Ran away. Uh, ran away. Ended up in different places. Yes. Like those today you would you'd find in, in Malawi. Mm. You understand? So, so these are people who, whom we need to say, come together. Let's do what we call a continental... Cleansing. Cleansing. Is that a project that you think, I think it, it is, is doable? It is doable. What is needed to put and this what, project together? Uh, Do you need politicians? Do no, you need royalties? No, Where is need, the issue? We need first people who are indigenous leaders. Mm. Number two, we can then uh, uh, compromise with those so-called indigenous leaders who have been placed by colonialism. I hear you. We can also compromise with the leaders. Political leaders. Because in the true sense, they are here. Mm. We need to find a solution where we have a symposium mm. to engage, to say, where should we start as the first step? Mm. We've got the solutions. Mm. As Embo Kingdom, we've got the solutions. Mm. We will assist in that particular space. We know which medicines are used for cleansing. Mm. We know what are the steps to be taken for cleansing. Not what they did at the Freedom Park, no. Mm. That's not cleansing. Mm. 
They must come to us, talk to us. As I said, a king is somebody that is chosen by the gods. Mm. But at the same time, I'll tell you a story. Mm. Do you know that I had to go or to undergo a ceremony for four months, and the last day of it, I had to complete my ceremony under the water, mm. the river, in Muritile? Mm. Wait. So what does it say to you? And uh, the person who assisted me with this ceremony, he was told from day one to say, if you are to assist him to do this ceremony, you must know end of the day after this ceremony, you live two to three months, you have to die. That old man says, I'm already old. He assisted me. So what I'm trying to say, it is because a king, when I said earlier on, I call upon the witches. I call upon the, 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 the kings or the queens of the waters. I call upon the winds. It is because I have undergone that ritual. Mm. I know what I'm talking about. Mm. I have authority on that space. I'm not just a person whom you would see, you say, I, I don't do that nonsense. Mm. But I know how to speak to the gods mm. and they listen to me. Mm. So we have to undergo that particular engagement in terms of that ceremony. We start here, we can then move. We can start with these so-called kingdoms that mm. have, been, have been put together by these uh, colonialists. Mm -hmm. Because some of them they don't even have a connection. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they, they, uh, you, you'll hear that he's a chief, but he's wearing a, a, a leopard skin. He does not even know uh, how is he supposed to wear, and how, when is he supposed to be wearing this particular leopard skin, how, in terms of rituals, he must, he must they, conduct. They put them when they are going to soccer. Absolutely. Mm. And you must, under, even in funerals, do you know that kings do not attend funerals? But yet. Do you know that kings are not even supposed, if, for an example, if you can see today, if you are a traditional healer, all those things that you are wearing, if there's a funeral in your family, you take them off. You take them off. But you see today people attending other funerals with uh, all these things, then you say, what is this thing? They come back, they go to their Indumba or where their place of sacred. Mm. And uh, you remember what I said earlier on? Mm. A place that is sacred, we don't, nobody enters that mm. place. You find the very same traditional, so-called traditional healers. Mm. They bring in in their space, maybe somebody who's menstruating, they, they put him into those medicine. Or that person has touched a corpse. Mm. He goes back to that particular place. Kings do not touch. Traditional healers do not touch corpses. Traditional healers do not attend funerals with their, their regalia. Yes. They must respect the gods. But yet, we we will be concluding in the last uh, episode, in the last few minutes that are remaining on the program, and I would want the king to give us a mini address in terms of taking the nation forward, uh, particularly on the lines and the issues that we have addressed. We've touched quite a, it's been a marathon of conversation from the installation of kings, the rituals that are being done, the selection of the king, the training of the king. The king is a custodian of the land, king is a custodian of culture, the king is a custodian of the heavens, the earth and the water that is running around him, justice and peace becoming the password of the king. And we actually got ourselves derailed a little bit, but on point in terms of maybe towards the end of the program again, looking at the greater uh, Mutimukulu, the nations coming together under one umbrella. And now towards the bright on the tail end, how we can begin to consolidate and seek for unity and love and peace treaties between tribes and nations that are estranged. But above everything else, I picked up something very important. Our police officers, our military generals, our entire parliaments in some certain countries, all of them, from the president to the clerk, they need to go to the river and bath. Because there's nothing that is happening there except filth, a whole machinery of thuggery and murder that is happening. After the break, we'll be picking up some pieces as we are heading for the final landing strip to conclude with our conversation with King Bungane III on the greater African continent, rebuilding our broken walls. Don't go away. We'll be back after the break.
a proverb in my tribe that says never bandage a soiled wound it only gets rotten if you have a wound you need to find a way of opening it up clean it up medicate it then you can bandage it and i think what we're looking at here is actually the diagnosis the prognosis and the prescription of the african cancerous issue when it comes to our political miscarriages and cultural mishaps that are happening particularly in zooming in into the cultural misunderstanding and the undermining of spiritual involvement in terms of the welfare of the greater continent and the various states that we're in and with us to give us some concluding remarks we have uh, been given some few moments now to give some nice concluding right. remarks in terms of what is the way forward when you are looking at it, and I will ask you to be quite broad, right. from indigenous medicines to indigenous That's education, to governance issues, That's what do you think Africa must be doing going forward? Remember, we have our people in the diaspora who were forcefully taken without their permission, without their parents' permission. Those people and their spirits, those who lived, during the time of slavery. And those who died on the sea. On the sea. We need to cleanse those spirits. We need to cleanse the seas. That's why we've got the tsunamis. That's why we've got all these hurricanes, whatever you can call it. That's why America will never come right. Because of the foundation of those Afro-Americans who were forcefully taken as slaves and constructed what you see today as United States of America. And in the Caribbean, in other areas also, we need to deal with that cleansing. Mm. Coming back to the continent, this continent is filthy because of people who are selfish, who never abide themselves with the laws and traditions of the gods. Mm who decided to jump ship from heaven, who decided to be those lost angels who they abide with the laws of the devil. Mm. So this continent is dirty with blood. Mm. This continent needs to be cleansed. We need also those people who died in the wars or who died in exile. Their spirit needs to be cleansed and be brought back in the proper way, back home. Hmm. These are spirits that their parents, others died whilst they are worried of their children. Hmm. We need to go back to the basics and abide with the laws of spirituality. What are the laws of spirituality in closing? We need to find ourselves spiritually so that we connect with God, so that we connect with the cosmos. And whilst we are doing that, we will be graduating into becoming a molded people mm. with a culture, right. with a tradition. And those people, who, as they are molded, they, they will end up having a nation that is divine right. but you can't achieve that with the current foundation that is full of blood right. and I'm appealing to all of you come back to the origin mm. come back to the basics let's help you to cleanse this land that is full of blood mm. thank you but yet, you could not find a better place to spend an afternoon with but to spend it right here on Sankofa, looking backwards at the future. And we have taken 
We have taken quite a big uh, stride here uh, with the king. And uh, I think if I can be allowed to indulge uh, on the issue of the graves that the South African government has dug in ancient times, what will it look like if someone digs a grave before you die in preparation of your death? <laughs> you know what they used to say? That's why they say when you build a house, mm. you must make sure that house is roofed because it invites death in the family. Mm. So what if it's true there are these graves, mm. if it's true, then it is a blasphemy. You're already welcoming people into Absolutely. that. That's why it is very important for us to understand the culture. Wow. It is very important to understand the traditions. It is important for us to be knowledgeable mm. about who we are as the people. Mm. We are the children mm. of the gods. Mm. We have the spirit of the gods living inside us. Mm. We are the chosen one. We've got what we call melanin in our system. Mm. What is wrong with Ubuntu us? Man. What is wrong with us? Mm. Why do we follow people who are cursed in heaven? Mm. Why do we have to found our foundation with the foundation of the cursed people? The cursed people today, when you look at the system of governance, mm. it is a West minister style of governance. It is a caste system. Mm. That foundation, it is full of blood. It is the blood of the Freemasons. It is mm. the blood that has been taken from the, 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 the woman. It's the blood of menstruation. Mm. How do you found your foundation mm. with that? Mm. How cursed are you? Wow. You heard it for yourself from the king, honorable. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. You seen too when someone has died, that's when they come with a piece of string yes. and then they measure how yes. how yes. long you are. You don't then they take grave, that string and then they go and measure your yes. grave. Yes. But now to have all these holes that are opened up almost like you're inviting death into the community. I didn't say that. The king himself is telling us that you don't have a house and you keep the roof open. You are inviting grave into that place. And, and I death. think today we've taken quite a big journey. It's not the last time I'm with the king here. We'll toothpick and pick up as much information as possible. And if there are any royalties out there, if there are any other kings out there who also have their narratives that they want to share, we, here we have a background and I'm glad we've established a solid foundation as to how things used to happen. And from the basis of that, we can always collect information and grow on that. But the whole idea of Sankofa is to build ourselves towards the greater Uka United Kingdoms of Africa under the emblem of AIM, African Indigenous Movement. Farmers of Thought is our thinking institution that is assisting us to come up with all these programs that we are presenting here. Galaxy is our vehicle through which we are pro 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 broadcasting our partner in terms of uh, communication. But the whole idea is that let us find our common ancestry, identify yourself as a branch, never insult the tree, never insult the roots because the roots sustain the tree and the tree bears fruit and if the roots are sweet how come the fruits that we are enjoying right now are bitter and when africans learn more of that which divides us we'll find reasons for war but when we find that which joins us together it begins to put us together as the greater african people and here on al kebalam here on embo we are not here to be discussing what divides us who are here to discuss what unites us as the people of melanin. And if we can know that our embryo, our embo, our place of genesis is the same from Cape Town to Nigeria, from Madagascar to Cameroon, from Algeria to Angola, we are one big, proud African Al Keblam embo nation. And I want to say, share my sincere gratitude Thank yous, thank yous, thank you, thank you. Isangla as is Lula Izul. Isangla Zul Izul. Thank you very much, Nkosiami, for spending time with us. Bayete Pungane, Bayete Ngelengele, Bayete Ngelengele. And your host here is Maponga J. Chigaramboko, Ugaramashamba Huda, Chirara Nava Nava Evanji, Ubo Obo Kwiro, Chizukuru V. Thank you.
machena wana mpona ngukuba shirira nawa na wewe wanji makumba mwana mwisende we shanu until we see you again on Monday night with your host Maponga J your program Sangofa don't go away something very good is coming after this and don't do what I wouldn't do but if you do it do it better Unjubuzamile <laughs> Bayete wena wasembo, bayete wena mpende kaputwa, kebente zombini, umafuza fule lenjengi ni fule mfula. Bayete mshoro kama ungala, kwa pungana kusakona kama kanda na kota, sabu zona kani kanda na kota. Bayete wena, wena mashobate wa shobate lungo mwende mponde na ugombo zayo. Bayete kukwa, bayete ngele ngele, bayete wena nyongala, wasemila jeni suwana witijela, kasemila njeni, bayete msukuru kani wanega mtumkuru, bayete mfoka mbube,
Bayate mfungu, bayate mpembe, bayate mashia mafe, bayate mfungani, bayate, bayate. We can check our seat. Unjubuza mile njumjolue nita bayo lungi no sabati. Ifige no ikenga kwa kusuma no mfungani windi gita yenda wapa. Uzema wa yinda wa nabuzi kutu wani kukhele nyati. Inko ufuka masuku kusisi koloze sile kwa ufu. Esa pegu mtu saka sa mchamenda. Bamba mbeba miyakera, bamba mbeba chakana nyonga kana mseto. Kumkato papa, kumkato papa kasi. Bayete khatebe, bayete mtunkulu, bayete mashia mafe, bayete wena wasembo, bayete wena mpende kwa kutwa. Kebente zombi ni, umafuza fule lenjegi ni fule mfula. Bayete mkobo kana mkala, kwa pungana kusakona mama kanda na kutwa. Sibona witi jela kasa milanjeni ba yete msukuru kanu anega mtunkuru ba yete mfoka mbube ba yete msukuru anega tatasera ba yete msukuru ana kaso tuwanose ba yete tuwane la mtuwa kazi Wasemira 
Kwanza ni sikuona kujitiela kasa ni lanjeni bayete msukulu kanwane ka mtsunkulu bayete mfoka mbube bayete msukulu ana katatasela bayete msukulu ana kasotfondose bayete tfola la mpakazi